year. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hey. <laughs> Uh, auntie music. <laughs> <laughs> we here, baby. And we are celebrating today, okay? Ain't we though? Mm, yeah. Mm, Do you mm. know what today is? Friends you with benefits. You know what's crazy? <laughs> Aunties. I don't aunties know how to uncles. really like. Body body roll? Oh, I guess we could. Is that what we got to do? Well, that's the snake. But uh, oh, what's the difference between a body roll and a snake? Well, the snake is with your arms and a body roll is like your body. Oh, there we go. If y'all watching on the YouTube, we it's body our rolling. Anniversary. Baby. We body rolling on our one year anniversary of See the Thing Is Pod. <laughs> For sorry. Oh, I think I just sounded like him. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Mandy get on the couch if you want to hit the notes, and I feel her. Go for it, sis. It's our anniversary. Let it rip. We made it through a year, y'all. We did. And I know y'all didn't think we was. <laughs> <laughs> you stuck with us, though. So, y'all, <sighs> oh, boy. I just want to start off by <laughs> saying that Mercury is in microbrave. For those of y'all who do not know, so I hope that y'all enjoyed the smoothness of the intro to this week's pod because, baby. Man. Baby. Yeah. Is Gatorading, microbrading. What else is it doing? Retrograding, Retrograding. apparently, is the word. Yeah. But uh, apparently, it doesn't end until October 18th. Help and us. Help one us of the God. crazy things about this, too, is I also, fellas, ladies, and I think we may have brought this up last week, but if, the, if you notice a lot of people from your past hitting you up right now, don't respond. Let it slide. Let it glide. Let it divide, <laughs> but don't respond because it's literally just be, be, because of the goddamn universe. It's the stars and moons and shit that's going on, apparently, but you know I don't believe it. Science. But that's what's going on. Uh, I do want to thank y'all uh, and welcome y'all to another episode of See The Thing Is Pod. Yes. We have made it a fucking year. I don't know if y'all... Those of y'all who have been with, have us, been from with us from episode one. <laughs> from episode 19. Sorry. Sorry, I'm episode just saying, one when the real show started because now we a year later here we are we've gone through so many hills and valleys you know it's been a lot of hills and valleys for us but it's been a beautiful year I'm so how, happy how has it been for you I mean again completely new industry and a lot of people that listen to us may have gone from accounting to I guess finance is kind of the same but yeah. I mean shit I went from bartending to accounting. So there's a lot of people that mm. go from one industry to the next. And we yeah. talk about that on our Patreon, on our Make It Make Sense segments. But how has this year of potting been for you? Do you feel like this was your call? Um, no, but I... <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Y'all, this well, is... No. The, that's how... <laughs> <laughs> that's how I feel about Bridget right now. Bitch, you lying. Uh, Oh, Let's man. not act like you no, are no, not no. here hopping on podcasts. Let okay? me tell you, I <laughs> love podcasting with you. I oh. love podcasting with you. I Thank would you. not I would not have made it through a year <laughs> if I was not with Mandy right well, here. Doug, I swear well, to also you. you're my neighbor, so you had no choice. Well, I, and I purposely moved around the corner from you. So <laughs> I was like, where can I live that makes the most sense across the street from Mandy? Let's go ahead and fully commit to this relationship right here. And so I really I'm I'm so grateful and and confident in the pivot, right? And I I don't um I know I, when I first when I first moved back to New York last year, I was very much um, in a space of doubt because I, I, which sounds crazy, but for anybody that's ever left their hometown, right, to pursue anything, mm. the idea, just the notion alone of moving back home, like moving back to your hometown, makes you feel like a makes failure. you feel like a failure, 100%. even if hundred percent, even if home is the greatest city on earth, which is New York City. You know what I'm saying? You still feel it's actually amplified because New York is the realest of the real. So you come home and it's like, damn, bitch, you move back to New York. Damn, yeah, bitch, I'm sorry. What I, happened to you? You OK? Girl, I get no clout for moving back to Orlando, Florida. <laughs> well, there's there's no I mean, <laughs> in my mind, there's no clout moving back to New York either. But it's also it's I realized once I got here how how blessed I was to even be able to say coming back home was still New York City and I could still come back and be and make it and make something pop. You know what I mean? And still come back oh, and yeah, pivot bitch. and 
and make something and, and make something happen in a very different realm than what I'm used to. That's amazing because if I go back to Orlando, I gotta work at the outlets or like a <laughs> or like a theme park <laughs> or a hospital. Many. Everyone in Orlando either works at the theme parks, the outlets, a hospital, or a call center. Mandy and... will be <laughs> handing out pickleback shots at Universal Studios. That's where Yo, Mandy will up. be at. She will be no, managing. She will be managing the most lit bar. On the premises, I guarantee oh, she'd be I, running that bitch, I running was gonna it. Tell you, I was going to be handing out the emu legs, but or we that talk, we just talked about that on or that episode. you can find Mandy where the picklebacks or the meat is. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, pause. <laughs> I don't even Wait, have I don't have wait, the, the sound bites, but I'm you know giving what? you an applause. Real applause. quick, hold on. Let me applaud you real quick, guys. <laughs> can I just <laughs> applaud Bridget real quick for talking about meat before I do on an episode? <laughs> this may be the first time and see the thing is Facts. history Facts. that meat was referenced by you before it me. Was. I made us I beat Mandy to the sexual reference. Oh, you, you beat it? Mm, not you beating it down, <laughs> bitch. Ah. <laughs> Don't mind us. Sorry, oh y'all. God. It has been a hell of a morning. I just started today with motherfucking a double vodka soda lime, and now I'm yeah. chasing it with wine. I landed so. at 8.30 and literally <laughs> had to go home. We had work calls all morning, and then I was like, wait, it's 12 o'clock. I got to get in the shower. I don't know what I'm doing. It's nuts. I haven't slept. I had coffee. Wine. Listen, coffee and wine is a hell of a combination. By the way, the excitement also comes from I don't feel like Bridget. Mm-hmm. I've spoken to you in like the last week. Yo, I'm not even going to hold you. <laughs> I was away for this last week, right? I went on a trip and we're going to get to that in a second because there's so many things. Um, I went to, I went to, I was in LA for a few days, which was, which was amazing. Really a beautiful trip and got to, got to catch up with a bunch of friends that I love. Um, and then went to Lake Tahoe for my man's birthday. And that was fantastic, except that the house that we stayed at was surrounded by by bears. <laughs> and so it limited a lot of our outside activity. I was thinking, oh my God, it's going to be great. We're going to go for a nature walk in the morning. And no, a bitch but was up bears, at 6.30 are bears and the bears those, was outside. Are bears one of those uh, things like, I don't know if it's like sharks. It's not like bumblebees, but it's like, is bears one of them animals that won't bother you as long as you don't bother them? Like, could you have still kind of just been doing what you need to do and the bears wouldn't have approached y'all? Or they would have charged you. Do bears charge? What do bears do? So there's two things to two things to bear in mind. Number one, the first bear sighting was three baby bears. So that's a job. You're not going outside when there's three baby bears because that means mama bear is around and they are very protective. Uh, they will charge you just for breathing next to their kids. Like their uh, bears are cra bears are really crazy. And usually, for the most part, we were instructed that that to if we see them just to stay inside because they're they're looking for food, right? And and Lake Tahoe, for anybody that doesn't know, is in Northern California. But it's also an area that was really, really, really suffered from uh, for wildfires in the last couple months. And so, mm. you know what happens at any time natural disasters happen, animals always get displaced, right? And so a lot of the bears, it's still warm out, so they're, they're not hibernating yet. So they, they have to, had to move around when there's a lot of forest fires. And so they were really, and they let us know in the area that there was a, a, a pretty decent population of them looking for food because they're getting ready to hibernate. And I guess... Um, I just the, really love that your yeah. black ass side came out and you didn't want to be like, oh, I mate, I'm going to go chase a bear today. No, I'm going to go. What's crazy? The baby bear. And you know what's crazy? I was the only <laughs> I was the only I was the only half white person, only remotely <laughs> white person in the house. And I was like, no, there's no there's no way. One of the um one of the uh one of the guys that was on the on the in the group with us was like, yeah, I'm gonna just go for a walk. And he he ran into bears on his walk and said he had to slide down a hill. Oh yeah, no. Nah, <laughs> to bro. avoid the, to avoid oh, getting too close. Hell no. And I was just like, no, there's no ounce of me. There's no ounce of my 50% of whiteness that that ever would have thought that that was a good idea. But nonetheless, it was a beautiful trip. Um it was nice to get out of the city, but I did I missed you so much. I was like, yo, this is cool, but yeah. I'm over here binging. I'm over here binge watching Squid Game drunk as hell and Mandy's nowhere around. This sucks. Well, because you went to Lake Tahoe, I actually went to uh I spent the weekend in Cancun, Tulum. Yes. It was really Tulum. Yes. Um which by the way, colonized as fuck now. Bitch, I was paying New York prices for drinks. And I was like, at this point Tulum will probably, I, I just would rather go to Vegas at that point. Mm. Like, I was paying $17 for yeah. drinks. Yeah. We went out to dinner. Our bill was like $400 for two people. Uh, we did the beach club, like mm. you said. Yeah, yeah, I was out there doing all the expensive yeah. shit, which I probably shouldn't have. But I just didn't want the bubble guts from, like, the street food. <laughs> so I was like, you know, let me not spend my whole vacation on the toilet. And then I was super excited to come back um, 
to the J. Cole concert. Still living her so life, her best I, life. I went there. Shout out to my good friends, Asante, who y'all may have heard on our Patreon, as well as Dustin. They're both members of the Friend Zone podcast. And we had a we had a blast. Uh, I want to give a super, super huge shout out to my childhood friend uh, and management of Slaughter Gang, Meezy. Y'all may have known him from Clubhouse, Mizo Estates. Mm -hmm. uh, good friend of mine, and he hooked it up for the tickets. And it was really, I enjoyed the show. I will say, for those of y'all looking to go, uh, New York specifically did not have any special guests. Damn. Which I felt like, damn, at least Cameron got to come out. Because we know J. Cole, when he puts on a show, he's going to go through the entire album yeah. in, in order of the album. Right. Um, and so... Quick I question. Was, Did you have to be vaxxed to be at this yes. show? Okay. So you had that to be... That might be another reason why some artists... Um, uh -huh. out. Bitch, they was all just at the Met Gala. Them niggas is vaxxed. Or at least got something to show they kind of vaxxed, even if they're not. I don't fucking know. But it made me actually kind of happy uh, to see that an arena... Uh, the, the capacity of Barclay was still able to be filled to the brim with people. Um, and yes, in order to get in, you had to show your Vax card or the Vax app. Here in New York, we have an, an app with our QR code and they did check your ID to make sure it aligned. So, and we had to show it like three times. So they did actually diligently check um, that. Yeah. It was cool. Um but it felt like it felt like pre-COVID concert days. It felt like pre-COVID concert yeah. days. I, again, I was upset that there was no special guest. I was looking forward to that. The only special guest they claim was Boz, but Boz is Dreamville. I didn't view Boz as a special guest. Um, but it was great. It was great. I will say still to this date, Forest Hills Drive was probably my favorite um, J. Cole concert to date. And that tour was him, YG, Big Sean, and I believe Jeremiah. But still to my to my day, the favorite. I really love the sets. If you are a creative and you don't go to a concert coming out of it, like, fuck, I want to do this on my show, or I wonder what this costs, or just the idea of the creativity that went behind the set mm, designs for everybody. Yeah. I absolutely loved it. And then me and Dustin looked around, and at that very moment, I became jealous of Bridget. Let me tell you why. <laughs> because I'm looking around the stadium and I just I'm have five, a little, eight. but no, not only that, bitch, <laughs> fuck you. No, not because of your height, but because I'm looking at this arena and I'm just imagining the feeling of being on stage, mm -hmm. performing in front of this many mm -hmm. people. And I think I'm, I'm about to go on tour and I think our largest venue is 1200 people, which is still a, great. A, a, a huge amount of people to perform venue. in front of. Yes. But this is like, I don't know, 15,000, 20,000 people. Where was this? Barclays. Barclays. Yeah. It's yeah. About 2025. Yeah. And so I was just like, damn, Bridget didn't got to sing in front of all these people <laughs> before. I wonder, like, I literally sat there for a moment and was like, I wonder what that felt like. Um, it's, it's indescribable. It's euphoria, it? to be honest. But I also I think I think the part that um, the part that's the most exciting, and I think any artist can attest to this, is the, the connectivity of it with the fans. It's like the fans are enjoying knowing that the fans are enjoying you as much as you're enjoying being up there. Is just there's there's no feeling in the world like it. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you're singing something and people are singing along with you. And you just, you just, you feel like you're one with the audience. That's a beautiful, beautiful feeling for any artist. We're speaking so. of, by the way, I'm, I'm not sure if y'all saw this uh, clip going, going around, but Doja Cat most recently performed at a festival. And I'm not sure which profess which festival it was, but if you guys remember maybe two years ago, there was a clip going around where she was performing and the audience was completely silent. Mm. No, no interaction. This last clip that just circulated this week, yeah. you couldn't hear Doja singing because the audience was singing every yeah. fucking word. Yeah. And it was just amazing. Um, and that actually led to me, if I, uh, I wanted to actually get into the next topic because when I saw it, I was like, oh, I want to ask Bridget about this because I've listened mm -hmm. to a couple podcasts mm -hmm. and none of them really had the answer to it. So um, Ashanti. Yes. So Ashanti, uh, it's just been announced that Ashanti actually owns her masters, yes. which I think is exciting. And let me verify, you own yours as well now, right? No, I do not. You don't. So there's a difference between masters and mm -hmm. what publishing and like what are, what are, like what are the different layers of what you can own on a song? What's the difference between masters and something else? Um, well, masters just means you you own the 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 property. You own the actual the ah. actual recording of the song. So that means that you have the you have the control and the power to license it if you want, to sample it if you want. Um, 
It just means you, that you are the, there's no more middlemen, right? Perfect so publishers, answer. publishers act as essentially middlemen between the artist and different, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I mean, nowadays it's streaming services. It's the late, it's, it's totally separate from the label. But I think, um, for, for someone like an Ashanti who writes everything, Right, that she's that she's been on, that she's she's written for other artists as well. For her to own her masters is really beautiful. I, I bought myself out of my publishing deal, but gotcha. I don't. My reversion rights are a little bit different, so I don't. I I have my everything reverts back to me after the length of my contract was up. Got you. So I can't. I don't know. I don't. I can't well, really the, talk about how much time that is, but it's that's that's usually what happens with with artists with artists. But if and you say deals. if you say she still owns the right to license it and everything else, so she could sample herself, right? But still. So my question is, what would be the the reason for her to re-record it? Like, would you even re-record your old music? Like, because if she owns the rights to do all this, if she owns her masters, why would she have to re-record it? Well, because I think, um, I don't know what the nature of her publishing deal is, but I know that when JoJo went, went and re-recorded her first album, it was to um, it was, it was was to be able to regain the rights to perform all the music again, ah. to make more money again and license them that way. I don't know what the, I don't know what the details were of her deal, but I would imagine that if she is... I would imagine that if she's going to re-record the first album, it's 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 because of that. It's because maybe some of the 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 clauses in her in her in her deal would would have inhibited her from doing all of that from the first from the previous recording. I don't oh, know though. I, okay. it's, it's weird that she's that if she you know, owns all the masters now, she wants to re-record. I, I guess that that's why like there's been confusion with everyone talking about this, and I was just like, I are you a fan of artists re-recording their records? Um. Be, only, like, do you feel like your voice right now? If no, you sung. Is I don't different think I than, sound. I don't think I sound. I don't think any artist really sounds the same as they did from fifteen years yeah, ago. Yeah, thank God Rihanna doesn't. But um, I like what <laughs> Rihanna when she first came out. I think we all. But I mean, she was a kid. She was a teenager. Don't do no. She was a teenager. Your but voice changes so much between yeah being a teenager and being a, being a, an adult. Well, yeah. th and that's why I brought that up because she says that she talked about creating this album actually in the basement of her house. So maybe she wants to give it a different spin. Gotcha. Now that she's able to do it how she wants to because she owns it, maybe she wants to remix it or do something different with it. I don't know. There's a million and one reasons she might creatively want to do that, but. I think that's kind of cool. Um, she said she wanted to feel like she had her own apartment, so she'd be downstairs. That's cool. I think that's really cool. I think I think maybe she just wants to do it to get back in the zone too of creating again and writing again and bring herself back to a place where she created some really incredible work. And I think that's I think that's great. Speaking of, y'all know I be on Twitter with these goddamn uh these threads, right? Mm -hmm. I came across a thread. And I want to play this song. And this is actually me. I'm going to shout out the whites on this one. Because this thread, this ended up. Tell me if you know this song. Of and course the I know idea this song. that y'all, the thread went into the ages of certain artists at the times of these smashes. So if y'all do not know this song, download it. This is complicated off of the Let Go album 2002 from Avril Lavigne. Bitch, she made this at 17 years old. Made back. It's all been done before. You can only let it be. You will see. You know what's crazy? First I don't of all, like this. turn Actually, this off because the fact that I'm I want the white you. Words, I want right? you to not. I, I want you to shut up about white. white people forever. Now that you know the words to this song, the, the, I'm so mad. You that cannot Ashley... say nothing about say bonus sitting here. But like, wait, how does Mandy but, know but these words? Do you know how mad and I was that be, I did that I got them right too. And Mandy be fucking up the words to everybody else's song. When okay. I tell you she had the notes and everything right for this Avril Lavigne record, sis, you can't say nothing so else about I the wanna, whites. I want to play the You're other one of song. us. Uh -uh. <laughs> you shut the God. We are, wanna, there is one white person on this couch. One. I want to play this other song <laughs> that also was in the thread. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is a 20, 2004 joint oh God. from another white. But she was only like 19 when this came out. I am waiting. This was a jam. And Tuesday. Ashley Simpson. I Jessica can't Simpson's sleep. little sister. So what's crazy about this is 
and the, the darkness dark. is a clear view. So what happened was at this time in my life, right? Uh, Mandy's white, y'all. <laughs> Parks is sitting here like, yep, pretty much. Parks doesn't even know this. I can't. No, Parks, Parks doesn't know the words. Parks, you don't know Parks pieces of me. Parks does not know this song. Mandy, okay. we are officially okay. at okay. our one year okay, anniversary. Wait, wait, we are going to man, stop the white not, slander. Not scream man typing who this? Exactly, Alex. All right. And Alex is our music. <laughs> Alex is our musical almanac. You understand? So I ended up on this thread, but shout out to all of the aunties listening. We used to jam to the, to and the all girls. Of, and all of the ants, because that's what white people call <laughs> their aunts. <laughs> shout out the ants. Wait, okay? all why the do ants. they say ants? Why do the they leave ants. out the whole you? The ants, okay? It's the it's, ants and the aunties But today. wait, you also make fun of me because I say aunt. I, yeah. say, I leave out the A. Well, no, it's, it's just you and that's, that's, that's your accent, aunt. <laughs> <laughs> it's your accent. You can't My help that. Aunt, Damn. Aunt. Well, I, I I went through that and it was just amazing because even knowing uh, your timeline as yeah. an artist, but hearing like how young these people were, because of course, when you, when I'm young, bitch, in 2002, I was 12 years old. So I'm thinking that these stars are 25 or well into their 30s singing about love, bitch. Ho, you was in high school talking about complicated. Piece of pieces of me was playing at the on the on repeat at Champs on the DVD at Champ Sports and that shit used to piss me off. Can you not tell everybody what my last job was? By the way, I worked at Champ Sports out, in you, Times Square. We both worked at Champ Sports. I worked at Champ Sports in Times Square and that was on that video it was pieces of me. It was um kind it was it was the Twister song Twister with Jamie Foxx got some Marvin Gaye some Lula Vent. that song. That song was on there. That oh, song, and you goodies, know remember and Sierra Goodies was you on know, there. You know, oh well you're a little older than me. Uh but on my playlist and yeah, was Usher's, Tiger. Yeah. Put the lime in the coconut and mix it all up. Put the lime in the... Is that how it go? Do y'all remember that song, Tiger's no, first song? I you got it. Anyway. I don't, but... You don't? Hey. Okay. Well, anyways, I wanted to bring that up. And I guess while we're stuck on music and performances and all that, mm -hmm. did you have any thoughts on uh, the Super Bowl uh, people being... I'm hype. I'm trying to go. Are you? I'm trying to go. Wait, this you, is actually a Super what? Bowl I would want to go see. Why? Because... I love the fact that this, first of all, this lineup, let's just start with the lineup alone. Snoop Dogg, Mary J. Blige, Dr. Dre, Eminem, and Kendrick Lamar. Do you understand the level of legacy? Also, the fact that they're doing this in LA and Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg are leading the, and Kendrick are leading the charge on this. I love that. I think they're so, I think that's such a, a beautiful way to do a Super Bowl in Los Angeles where, where music culture really does reign. And that's that's fire to me that they're that they're doing it that way. Uh, We've but, never seen this this no we haven't this black of a, a halftime show ever. Um, I Beyonce don't know, I, Beyonce is probably the only the only other one, and even then she still came out with she still who she bring out Coldplay. She still yeah, brought she out brought Coldplay. Out, she brought out a white. Uh, so <laughs> I mean, shit. Even Janet Jackson got taken down by Justin. Like fuck. Nicki Minaj and Nicki Minaj came out with Madonna. Oh wait, and who did and J Lo was brought out? It was Bruno J Lo and Shakira. Oh, last year was like the Latin Super Bowl. Last so, year was the okay. Latin Super Bowl, and that was fire. That was amazing to watch. Don't get it fucked up. But also, Bruno Mars brought out uh, Coldplay as well. Oh, okay. Well, I'm um I'm excited yes. for it. I will definitely be watching it at a Super Bowl party. I would like to. go. I don't think I really want to go. Um, it's also. It's weird. It looks like it's a week later, I guess, uh, depending on the calendar. Yeah. It being February 13th, I know that that's normally the week that All-Star Weekend is. So that's I'm correct. curious to know if All-Star Weekend is pushed back by a week or two as well. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I really want to go, but I'll watch it. I'll be up in the house. Versus has me really just enjoying performances on TV again. Like... No, I'm good. No. I'm well, good. I mean, you've gone, but you've gone to verses now. And, and that's why I was like, bitch, I got so drunk, I, I forgot the songs they played. <laughs> so I was like, I'd rather at least be able to just be in my house drunk and not know how no. I got home. Like, No. I yeah. really, for me, if I, if I, that's why I want to be at the Super Bowl because I feel like now, at this stage in my life, I, I only want to be at legendary performances Did you now. just want to go back to L.A.? Like, no, 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 not even. I mean, we have to go back to L.A. We got work to do. But um, no, I, I really, I mean, I, I, love, I love the idea of, of so much beautiful black talent on this stage. This is the yeah. biggest stage in the country. This I, is the most, I, I the you, most watched you correct, event. I, you got to correct yourself. What? Eminem is still on there. All right, so so, but like I said, it's, it's the most okay. black halftime show. It's okay. one white person. Okay, 
All right. This is the most black halftime show we've seen. Yeah? Yes. Except Beyonce. Beyonce's the only one. Did Destiny's Child ever do the Super Bowl? They did the national anthem. Ah, uh, okay. Or All Beyonce, right. Beyonce did the national anthem in 2003. Destiny's Child did it though, right? I thought they did. Oh, Destiny's not, Child not didn't Destiny's do the Child. anthem. Beyonce oh. did in 2003, I believe. Okay. Um, well, either way. Either, either way, way. Either way. Either way. I would love to see it because it's also... When, when are we ever going to see Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg and Mary J. Blige and Kendrick Lamar on stage together? I could do without Eminem. I don't, care. I don't really care whether he's there or not. I just hope he puts this uh, money into like an offshore account before that ex-wife come and try to uh, Listen, get you some know, more money. Do you know what I do, do, you know what I do <laughs> love about this, about Eminem being the token, the token white guy on this? What? Usually it's the other way around. Usually, okay. it's, usually it's all it's a whole fucking lineup of white talent, and then it's like let's just throw a person of color in there so that people don't get upset. Let's not ruffle feathers. That's what this feels like. This was like Valid. let's get all this top tier black talent and let's throw somebody white on the bill just so we don't piss anybody off. Valid. You know what I mean? But you couldn't. You, you weren't going to throw Toby Keith up there with Dr. Dre. You weren't going to get Luke. You weren't going to get Luke Bryan up there with Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> Who are these people? <sighs> Who did you just say? Who them people is? Did either no? one? Y'all don't know who Toby Keith is. You know. who... You know the name. <laughs> Not Parks only knowing the name. Luke That's Bryan? You... Luke Bryan? Country country star? Oh. They're uh -oh. country, they're country artists. Oh. They're country artists. Okay. Well, but the only reason, the only reason I even I even know who they are is because as a songwriter, I'd be looking up who the country stars are. They'd be selling records and they'd be selling records, honey. Well, so does Lil Nas X. So Hello? There's and that. he'd be on all the commercials. Be Yo. That can we talk about the commercials? Lil Nas X has more commercials out right now than anybody else I've seen in a long time. No, it's I. I mean, it's and crazy. I, he I had a commercial the, with Elton John. I really like I love what his team is doing for him. I know we talked about too. I like what Doja and Sweetie's team is doing for them as well. I really like that they out here getting his bag. I am too. like they are getting the, to too. the fucking bag. Um, I guess you know we don't talk about music. Let's not get into. Let's get into some real shit. Let's get into some real shit. What do you want? What, what you want to talk about? Hold on, because we got we a lot. a lot. Okay, let me ask you. Do you want to start off deep? Do you want to do the girl code section? Mm. Or do you want to do some relationship shit? Mm. Let's do relationship shit. Relationship shit? Yeah. All right. So we talked about them on the pod. Mm -hmm. We finally have heard from <laughs> Will Smith. <sighs> now, a lot of y'all just are sick of hearing from them altogether. But I actually love that we're hearing from more of the people that, you know, have been relationship, quote unquote, goals that have been successful. We've seen them become parents. We've seen them transition in their careers. Yeah. Um, and I want to read this quote because then I want to get into asking you some questions, bitch. OK, yes, go for it. So will we know if, if we go back to the Red Table talk and the whole August Alcina and the what was what was they calling it? The entanglement? Uh, yes. <laughs> debacle. Um, Will Smith was kind of quiet in that. However, he most recently sat down with GQ, and this is what he said. He said, Jada never believed in conventional marriage. Jada had family members that had an unconventional relationship. So she grew up in a way that was very different than how I grew up. There were significant, endless discussions about what is relational perfection? What is the perfect way to interact as a couple? And for the large part of our relationship, monogamy was what we chose, not thinking of monogamy as the only relational perfection. We have given each other trust and freedom with the belief that everybody has to find their own way. And marriage for us can't be a prison. And I don't suggest our road for anybody. I don't suggest this road for anybody. But the experiences that the freedoms that we've given one another and the unconditional support to me is the highest definition of love. Mm. Now... A lot of you who have listened to me over the last five years on my other show and in which I've explained to you my relationships, I 100% believe in an unconventional relationship. Yes. Um, I identify my relationship as a swinger okay. where I like to be involved if we're going to introduce other people into the bedroom. Um, again, that doesn't mean that I'm fully in control even in that space because of course, I can't control what the other people do when I'm not around. But are the interactions strictly sexual? Mostly, yeah. I yeah. mean, not mostly. Well, well, I'm only talking about in the bedroom. Right. Because to me, right, when right. you talk about a relationship, no one ever really talks about your homeboys and homegirls that you have on the side of your boyfriend. Right. They talk about who you're with intimately. Correct. Who you're in the bedroom with outside of your partner. Right. Um, I, I do believe that 
we have multiple people for us and I don't believe in finding perfection in one person. Okay. So to me, I would rather approach a relationship realistically. Okay. And I think that, and this isn't to monogamy shame, but I think that monogamy upholds all of these unrealistic expectations from your partner. Mm. And I think that because we assume a monogamous relationship almost to have a sense of possessiveness to it, where you're mine and I'm yours and no one else can have you, it also it also leads to a relationship of dishonesty. Right. Because a lot of men and women right. don't know how to go into dating and be like, hey, I really like you. I really enjoy being with you and I mm-hmm. actually really want to build with you. Right. However, are you okay if I also see XYZ on the side? Or are you okay if I go on a trip if... I just give up, you know what I mean? If I if I have fun, right. is it okay for me to have sex with other people? And I think that we have not yet reached a space in society where many of us are mature enough for those conversations. So unfortunately, we show up with masks. We show up with people that we aren't. Now, is this to say that they're completely happy in this unconventional relationship? Absolutely not. But I wanted to ask you, knowing mm-hmm. that they've been together for, I believe, almost 20 years or so. Longer than that. A little over 20 years. Yeah. Bridget, do you believe that it is inevitable for a relationship to happen where after being with someone for so long, you will innately grow the desire to be with another person or change the dynamic of your relationship? Do you feel like it's inevitable? No, I don't think it's inevitable. I think everybody, everyone is, everyone is different, right? And I think the beauty about relationships is to not strive. The whole point is to not strive for perfection. Mm. And I, I think, I mean, I, I believe that wholeheartedly. I believe okay. the only way to really establish a level of happiness. I let me let me first let me first start out by saying the only thing I ever thought about Will and Jada's public relationship, public marriage, that was goals, was the fact that both of them always let themselves be themselves and they and they and they always preached about not resting all of the pressure on their partner's shoulders to be the source of their happiness you have to be happy by yourself and then figure out later how your partner can supplement and and complement your happiness that already exists right mm. and i think that's goals the rest of it i think is very difficult i think every individual has different intimacy needs for some people monogamy works for some people, monogamy provides a structure that also, you know, sometimes includes kids or pretty often includes children. It provides a family structure that grounds people and people find security and stability and peace in that. I don't I don't look at monogamy necessarily as a cage for those of for those people that it works for, mm. because I also don't think a lot of people do. A lot of people are comfortable enough with themselves. The dishonesty starts within. Right. That's what I said a couple weeks. I said it to you. I said it to you a couple weeks ago. Right. No one's gonna lie to you like you lie to yourself. Right. So if you're lying to yourself about what it is that you need and what you expect from your partner, regardless of being realistic or not, if you're not honest, you can't be realistic. So if you're not honest with yourself, you can't be honest fully with your partner about what your needs are. And most people don't do the work at any at any point in life, whether it's adolescence or twenties or thirties or forties, don't do the work to figure out really what it is, establish what they need and what they want and what works for them. And confidently stand in that truth. Well, you just said even even the word confidence brings me to, and then you also mentioned security. Mm -hmm. But security, a lot of times we think of security as a financial realm of security. But in the aspects, uh, when I think of insecurities Mm -hmm. in in relationships specifically, a lot of those insecurities stem from you not feeling like you are who you are to your partner. Or that you're enough. Which is why you fear them going to other people. Which is also why, even in this space, where we just heard fucking Jada say that she doesn't even know if she's she knows how to love someone or if she's ever experienced love. So the and idea... And that's a very honest place it is. to be. I mean, not when you have kids, bitch. You better know how to love your kids, bitch. No, there's a lot of people that don't know how to love their kids. We know... Yeah. What? Think okay. about how many people... Okay. Think about how many people we know that... that and we talk, we talk about it with each other sometimes about... Not necessarily our parents, Miss Tammy. Ain't no, ain't no shade to you, Miss Tammy. We know you yeah. did. We know you did your thing. <laughs> but a lot. Oh of yeah, people, but my daddy and shit. You're right. But a lot of us have 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 one parent or two that really emotionally did not deliver and could right. not, didn't have the capacity to. Not even, right. and not not even like to their fault because they didn't want to. They just didn't know how. Right. I think a lot of parents wing it, and now the older that I get, and and watching my friends become parents, I think parents wing it 
way more often than they feel prepared. Oh, uh, you're right. And so I think in relationships too, yeah, a I ain't lot of us, them little doll houses and having babies and shit, girl, that shit ain't prepare nobody for like, nothing. That, bitch, I had an easy bake oven, and you know, I my mom still can't believe I know how to cook because I, I never I knew had how an to easy cook, bake bitch. oven and I burned ten minute rice. Okay, Wait, it's it, no, not anymore. I'm really okay. great at rice now. I can I, I can make regular rice. It but took the, me the, a the long quick, time the to quick, learn the rice. The quick ten minute rice, I fuck up. I could do regular rice. Bitch, rice, rice and noodles. I ain't gonna tell you how many times a bitch that made that motherfucking mac and cheese, and it was just like, it was either <laughs> it was either gooky, like you know when you let the the noodles go too long. Yeah. So bitch, I had mashed mac and cheese. <laughs> so yeah. it was that, or I just would put it in my mouth, and on the outside it would be like soft, and then have a crunch. <laughs> <laughs> So it was reversed. It, it was, was <laughs> no, 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 bitch. It was soft on the outside, but then once I yeah, really, it was reversed. It was I supposed was like, to have that that, <gasps> that that crispy top. Anyway, no, I I think as it pertains to relationships, I really do think that every individual person has to figure out what works for them. And there is somebody. I, you know what I do believe there is somebody for everybody. I really believe that, and I think you have to find a person that complements the things about you that make you the most honest. Because if you're with somebody that that doesn't inspire and invoke an honesty from you, I always say real love, real love is confronting. It's confronting. It's going to force you to have to face some shit you don't, you don't really want to face, number one. And number two, some things that you probably can't face alone that you right. need a partner for. And I think that's the time when you figure out, okay, cool, this is what we're striving for. We're striving for something that's maintainable, something that's sustainable. And in my mind, emotional security looks different for, for a lot of people. I'm a needy it, person. It, I'm emotionally also, a needy also person. Also, then, is it weird? We have all of these friends. Yeah. All of these friends provide us different things. We, yes. Our friends are all different. They, they yes. show up for us differently. Yes. Is it then kind of weird not to maybe go into, and maybe we can come up with a name for it, but, I mean, I'm sure there's already a name for it, but... Mm -hmm. I know where to, you're going. But to go into going. relationships, understanding that I can be... An, multiple relationships with multiple people and all of these people mean something to me, but they all show up in different spaces. And that's the thing when I say right. one person can't be perfect for you. Well, it's not about, but that's why I say it's not, a, you can't put the, you can't put the perfect label on anything because you can't put the perfect label on friendships either. Like you just right, said, everybody, right. everybody is going to fuel different needs. That's the standard that needs to be set for all relationships across the board. As far as the levels of intimacy are concerned, mm. intimacy goes beyond sex. But intimacy, why? Why does it go beyond Why? sex? Well, for one, I mean, we really want to get into the science of sex now. No, and how but exchange, I'm intimate, with, I'm intimate with my friends. The, I'm, I mean, to of me... Of course, but different levels. There's certain things that Are there gonna, different levels? Bitch, I be fucking my friends too. Not you, y'all. I ain't done you. But I'm saying, I be intimate <laughs> with my I friends. I ain't done you. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy! I'm just saying, I be intimate with my friends. Yeah, but not all of them. Majority. Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> So what I'm saying is, well, let's let's remove sex from intimacy for a second. Okay, oh, and let's here we go. Only, let's only talk about intimacy. There's Come on, scream, man! Spiritual intimacy, intellectual intimacy. There's gonna be, there is going to be different people in your life that you're close to that you have different intellectual and emotional connections with. That's just how it is. There's gonna be friends that you call in the middle of a crisis. If you in the middle, you got your back is against the wall. You in some, you in deep with some money shit. There's one or two people that's going to come to mind for you to call. Okay, so it's emotional, intellectual, experiential, and Expert. spiritual. Mm -hmm. Which means... Yeah. If my nigga ain't got all four, I could have at least three more of the niggas. Because I need these four types of intimacy outside sex. So technically, there's five if we're including sex. And if I feel like my emotional, intellectual, experiential, or spiritual needs are not being met... Of course, as human beings, we're, these are the levels of intimacy that right. we are seeking. And again, because we can't expect our partners to show up perfect, I may be lacking in one of these in which I should, if you want me to be happy, right. you should want me to experience all these levels of intimacy. But also then where do you draw the line with the standards that you set for your partner? Because why would you be with a partner that only, that only meets one out of four? Girl, then you ain't never been digmatized? Girl. That's not a partner then. That's not a, anything other than a sexual partner. I, I know the aunties. That's not listening. a life partner. Girl, I know women that have moved niggas in. The hobosexuals have gotten writ and a roof over their head because they was able to show up sexually. I told you, I've had sex with guys that I didn't even want to talk to after. Okay. What I'm saying so, to you is that we're not talking about life partners. You're not going to set up shop to live a life with somebody that does not do anything other than give you good dick. You're right. Okay. Not life. <laughs> you're not setting up to do life with somebody that only bringing good dick to the table. That's not... 
And then maybe we go to church. Then maybe we go to church on Sundays. All That's right. the spiritual part, right? And then pray for you. And yeah, and 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 repent. I understand. <laughs> I get it. I feel you. It's a good order. In that order, it's great. No, I just I just <laughs> think it's interesting. So for just I like that he came out and said it because while it's been rumblings in Hollywood for yeah. years, what their dynamic was. I do like the idea of conversations like these being had just so that they can trickle down into our our conversations, our group chats, our relationships. I think it's absolutely important and imperative that you go to your partner and say, hey, what does what does a, a, a healthy relationship look like for you? If you had all realms to do as you please and yeah. you know it would strengthen our relationship and our communication, mm -hmm. what would that be? And as women, to be honest, we need to almost allow that room for men to be like, listen, I don't want to cheat on you, right. but sexually I do have an appetite that I, I want to feed from right. time to time. Is this something that we can communicate with? If not, can we go to a club together? If not, like, I there's think there's so that, many options. There's so many options, but unfortunately, I think that there's still a lot of fear. There's a lot of fear also with women. Women going to their man like, babe, I want to I wanna train ran on me or something crazy. But, like, the idea of even women not being able to completely express themselves sexually leave a relationship a lot of times on both ends to be unfulfilled. Yeah, but I also think that that people are more, people are less afraid of pushing people away and more afraid of not being able not more afraid of the idea that they can't undo something that may not that may cause damage, right? Mm. Like once you once you open that once you open Pandora's oh, box, Pandora's box and we give that a shot and then I decide I, that doesn't work for me, but this works for you. Where is that going to leave us, right? You can't put the tooth you can't the, put the toothpaste toothpaste back in the tube. You can't, but that's where again relationships mm -hmm. are only as hard as we make them. And so right. yes, the con you know I hate confrontation. I know y'all think I'm petty as hell and a bitch just be liking it. Mandy a, hates da, 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 confrontation. Da, da. That's do. the only that's actually the only thing about Mandy that that drives me up the wall <laughs> I is, really, is the is the passive aggression. Passive I'm, aggression for me <laughs> is the number one and and what's wild is because I'm around so many Libras and I'm around so much of the passive aggression, it makes me seem like I'm a like I'm a combative person when really I'm a resolution person. I'm confrontational cuz I like to get to I like to get to the to the resolution. Yeah, I want us to I come to like, a place of understanding. I don't I don't like confrontation, and so I've been reading this thing, uh, this book called Set Boundaries, Have Peace, or some shit like that, yeah. um, and I'm hoping we can get her on the podcast, but I've been realizing that my idea of even my boundaries, because I don't want to be confrontational with someone, I just ghost them. So instead of actually really resolving Jesus. anything, which is why this is driving me crazy in business, because, right. oh, no, bitch. You can't ghost business. No. Lawyers have to be involved. We have We're to show up. Partners. We, we have to show, show up. up. There's a lot going on. That's so, correct. Um, I just think what this essentially does is what is completely necessary, and it it drives home the importance of communication. Not even just communication. Respect is the founding, the founding piece of any relationship. Respect, patience, understanding, and then communication is important, but if you don't have respect and patience and understanding and and then even prior to mm. that acceptance, you have to be able to accept that there's going to be things you can't change about your partner. You have to be willing to accept. You better accept that your hate shit, nigga. But <laughs> you better just accept Not his motherfucking ass <laughs> for all the eight shitness no, that he is. You have to really accept that you cannot control it. Whether whether you are subscribing to monogamy or not, you cannot control this the relationship. You can't. If you cannot accept that, there's no ounce and no amount of communication or understanding that's going to lead you to that. You have to come from a place of acceptance, which maybe is the reason I'm so confrontational too, because I'm accepting of the fact that prior to any engagement with somebody. I'm, I'm accepting that they may not agree with me. I'm accepting that they may not really be interested in meeting me where I'm at, but I'm, it's worth a try to me. And so I think in relationships, the goal that you that you strive towards is not perfection, but really the commitment to keep showing up with respect in mind, with understanding in mm. mind. And I think that's the that's the beautiful thing that I'm I took away from this article was like, damn, against all odds, even when they when they hurt each other. Like unintentionally hurt each other. They, I mean, you could tell they've hurt each other a lot. They've been right. together for twenty some odd years. Think about yeah. how many times we've been hurt, and we're not even married. We ain't been oh with the same Lord. person for twenty some odd years. Think about how much you've been hurt in a relationship, overcoming that hurt to continue to come back to the bottom line in the relationship, which is we want to keep doing this respectfully together. One hundred percent. 
Well, I wanted to lead this into actually our girl code conversation mm. because in terms mm. of respect and things we can control, mm. um, I want to start off by first sending condolences uh, and love to and Maya prayers. Marcano. Uh, she has been found, um, and this did touch uh, close to home. She's from around your way. She is, uh, she's from Orlando. Uh, mm -hmm. This is also, you know, so a lot of y'all have been seeing that uh, the missing Florida college student who disappeared weeks ago, they recently found her body. And what's crazy is they spoke about even the apartment complex that this took place in. And this apartment complex was right next to the apartment complex that I grew up in. It's probably wow. no longer Ashley Point, but Temper Skin is right next door on Texas wow. Ave. And I went to elementary school in the zone for this Palmetto Elementary. Wow. Um, and, or it might be Catalina. Catalina or Palmetto would be the elementary school for this. Mm. And so reading this report, seeing a lot of people that I still follow in the Orlando area post this over the last couple of weeks and now them finding her body. Um, I wanted to speak to some of you imbeciles on Twitter. <laughs> um, and a lot of the men oh, also man. that I see responding to this story. First off, let me start by saying that she was 19 years old. Um, secondly, let me go ahead for those of you who are not familiar with the details of this. Uh, Maya went back to her apartment and the maintenance man in which had been trying to holler at her and had at one point been stalking her because it is, it, it was shared that she told someone at her job that this maintenance man was stalking her. She respectfully let him down, denied his advances, well, we all know that in these complexes, there's master keys for apartments. And so unfortunately, on one of the afternoons that she went home, he was already in her apartment. He raped her, killed her. And then once the police had him as a suspect, he committed suicide, um, which also let all of us know that we were kind of preparing for the worst. Um, and her body was recently found in a garage, uh, again, at uh, near the apartment complex. Oh my God. And what disturbs me more than anything is me reading all the comments like, well, maybe she should have entered with a gun or maybe she should have. And all of these ideas, someone even posted, a, there's a bar thing that you could put under your door right. to make sure no one comes in. He Com had the master key. But also the idea that they were missing the detail that he was in her home awaiting her. So the fact that he we're, had the key, bro, we're not even safe in our own homes. And it's crazy because all I keep seeing are all of these solutions for how women need to protect themselves and not the conversation about how men need to be having the conversation with their homeboys as to you're going too far. Hey, maybe that girl's too drunk. Maybe you should back away. Hey, maybe as men, there needs to be a larger conversation with Yo, she's just not interested. And it's crazy because I did an Instagram live and I was talking about online dating. And I specifically asked, as a man, are you aware when a woman is just not interested? Right. <laughs> and he, he said, eh, not really. The bottom line really is we have to stop giving mixed messages. That's, mm. That goes for men and for women, right? We can't hold, we can't hold women accountable for the nasty horrific shit that men do to women. We cannot. Right. But two things can simultaneously be true. One, as women, we are taught to be silenced, like you said, and not be upfront and stern about a boundary. We're taught we have to pad an approach to a boundary to make things more comfortable and more digestible but for men. Niggas. Which, but by no. the way, no, which, by the way, as sorry. we've seen, <laughs> never fucking works. That part. So stop padding the approach and continue on the strong path of no means no. And if you feel, ladies, if there's anything, any inkling in your gut, in your intuition, mm -hmm. in your consciousness that is telling you that you are in danger, please, I implore you, seek help. Talk yes. to somebody, talk to law enforcement, talk to the men in your family, talk to men that you know that are around, your homeboys. Let them know what's going on and, yep. light, and light that fucking predator up. Because there's too many moments like this situation, especially with young women, where they're scared to say anything. Yep. It's he's he was the what the super the manager that worked there had a master key to her apartment. So this is somebody that can affect her livelihood and living situation, and she probably didn't even feel comfortable feeling threatened. 
Right. She was embarrassed probably and didn't want to make a scene. And that happens yep. way, so too 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 way too often. Way. So we have to stop playing these these like pitter patter games of trying to keep it cute. These are not this is this is now a life and death situation. We don't have any time to keep it cute with these boys or these and these and these unstable, immature men. We don't have time to keep it cute with them. It has to be a stern no. It has to be a stern boundary at all fucking costs. Right. Um, one of the other things that was brought to our attention maybe a couple weeks ago, uh, shout out to our network sister, uh, Ming Lee. She actually went through and, and told this horrific tale of finding one of the Apple tracking tags in her mm. car. Oh my God. Um, and she believed it to be, to have been put there by valet. And I actually wanted to bring attention to this, to all of our women listening. So these Apple tracking tags are essentially used to like be placed onto keys and things that maybe you lose often. And of course the app is connected to your phone. It's it. What it is essentially is a GPS tracking device. And there's been a lot of conversation on social media, uh, including TikTok and Instagram, where women are finding these tags in their cars, in their purses, and they don't know where it's from. So a TikTok that was posted earlier this week, a woman in California, uh, mind you, this TikTok now has over 9 million views. Uh, she said that she found an Apple AirTag attached to her license plate, uh, which had been tracking her whereabouts throughout the night. Uh, she was shaking. Again, this is... What, what sucks about this is this could happen to literally any of us. Uh, mm -hmm. If we go to valet, if we go and get our car washed, um, and a lot of women are being targets. It's funny because I was listening to an episode, of course, of the Joe Budden pod, and they were even talking about how when they go to these clubs, how much they don't even feel like they got to tip the girls because the girls are out here with money. Right. We know that women are out here getting to the fucking bag. We're entrepreneurs, whether we're in the clubs or whether we're starting our own fucking uh, e-commerce businesses. A lot of women are getting to the bag. And what's unfortunate about that is, is it's putting an even bigger target on our backs. Fuck sex. Now we're even targets of being robbed. We're targets of just a lot of unfortunate crimes and... So I wanted to, to, to let it just be known. Ladies, if you go to a car wash, if you go to a fucking, uh, if you go to a valet, if someone borrows your car, if you're walking and maybe you put your purse down, just be sure that you're always, always, always cognizant about your surroundings and who you let into your personal property. Because I know that we've done that with drinks now. I think we're, we're all at a space where we know not to leave our drink anywhere without watching it. Um, we put napkins over our drinks now. Again, it's just unfortunate that we really do think about this every time we leave our house. And unfortunate, even with the Maya thing, we see even coming to our home, we can be in danger. Um, but I just wanted to let you guys know now terrifying. that, yeah, That's these uh, Apple tags are definitely out here being being used to track us uh, in some things. And so definitely look it up. Uh, Apple has issued not a statement but they did an update on this to where basically if your phone is near the apple tag you will get an alert which yep. is how ming found out it was even in her car yep. she got an That's alert should be that the tag was alerted and so yeah uh again guys just definitely be aware of your surroundings ladies uh, I wish you nothing but safety. And, I also and think men. I think Apple should just discontinue these altogether. If I'm being actually, honest. Parks just said he got one on his keys, and I like, thought about get. I, I thought I thought initially I would want one on my phone because I'd be putting this shit down if it dies. If it, you know what I mean? I'm like, well, what if I keys is another one? I always lose my keys. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's unfortunate. Fuck not being discontinued. It's crazy because I also had the conversation. with I know, Ish. but it's like, am, am I going to really sit here and argue with and argue yeah, but, and, and defend the convenience of being able to find my keys? No, but even I, I had this conversation with. Being at risk. <laughs> I, was, I had this conversation with Ish recently because they were on the pod talking about Visine eye drops mm. and apparently not being able to go into the club with them because they get, they put meth or whatever drug back in the day. And mm. I said, Ish, that may be your era because you're half a century old. But I said, <laughs> I said when when I was going to the club, we love we love you, Ish. You the <laughs> you the fun you the fun old cousin. Don't you know, let don't let Mandy little, play you, bro. With your little hairy knees and green eyes, you cute. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but. When I was going to the club, I had to let him know and educate him that eye drops and Visine actually weren't something that was allowed in the club because mm. it was being used as a date rape drug. Right. So if you put eye drops into a woman's drink, 
it could literally make her woozy or or uh, dizzy to where you now have time to do what you want with her. Maybe she's drunk enough to where you could take her out. So they don't allow eye drops in the club because it becomes mixed with alcohol, a date rape drug. Um, again, so yeah, your your solution of just getting rid of them all together, that would mean we just need to get rid of niggas altogether. And because that's <laughs> impossible, <laughs> let's just say no. Um, I did want to bring up something before we get into our freshly squeezed. Yes. Because a little bit of it perturbs me. But a little bit, bit of it brings like some nuance. So McDonald's yes. is bringing back the McRib sandwich. Yes, look at Jesus. Now look you at God, say, won't he do it? Now what's won't crazy? He do it? What's crazy about this is my mom. And for any of y'all now pregnant, if you don't want your child to come out with like me, my mom <laughs> said that this is actually this was her pregnancy food. Wow. So when she was pregnant with me, the McRib sandwich was her go-to. And I don't know, maybe it created the genius that I am today. Um, but yeah, they are pretty much celebrating their 40th anniversary of the McRib. And in doing so, they are bringing it bike uh, nationwide on November 1st. Mm. Um, so I wanted to add that actually this was added to menus, uh, of course, in Kansas City, because barbecue there is good as fuck. Kansas but back City, in Kansas 1981, or Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City, there's only Kansas City, Missouri, mm-hmm. right? There's Kansas City in Kansas. No, there's right? not. Oh no, there's, there is a Kansas Wait, City is there? in Kansas. There's a Kansas City, Kansas. Says Kansas City Chiefs play in Kansas. So they no, they, bitch, they play in Missouri, bitch. Oh. And I don't know that because I got flued out, and I was like, damn, I didn't know this and was that far. You only know that because you got <laughs> flued out. I swear to God, it was like a four hour flight. Kansas and I was City, like, Kansas is absolutely a place. But it's in Missouri. No, sis. It's in Kansas. There's two. But the but the Chiefs play in Missouri. Okay, so the Chiefs play in Kansas City, <laughs> Missouri, but they but there is a Kansas City, Kansas. But Kansas City, Missouri is good known for barbecue as well. Is Kansas City Kansas known for barbecue? Anyways, goddamn it, look at us looking up the goddamn map. I don't I wanna know, know where can yeah, like I wanna know where can what the, I mean, we're never gonna go to Kansas, sis. Well, we definitely not getting flued out. Well, um, I mean, bitch, you don't know, bitch. <laughs> to, to Missouri, I will be. But no, it's crazy because I am petitioning for a second week in a row. Don't don't laugh. And say, I'm shaking my head. I'm it, not laughing at all. Check your side. Check it's, check all of that. I. Right? <laughs> um, but anyways, I want to say what's crazy about them bringing back the McRib is mm-hmm. I am now starting a petition because everybody in my comments know about that motherfucking steak bagel and y'all say, Vaughn. Wow. I I don't know. Maybe it's because you're you know, you're a young buck, um, isn't aware <laughs> of the steak bagel, but it's one of my favorites. So maybe uh, loves a steak bagel. Yeah, but it's not gone. But I do want to say, uh, if y'all the are McRib. a fan of the McRib, November, November 1st, 1st, y'all can go ahead and get that at McDonald's. McRib, uh, was, McRib was such a staple, such a lunchtime. It was a treat. You know, when you're a kid and you look forward to something like it was just, you always want to have your, your birthday, your birthday party at McDonald's. You always wanted to have the McRib. So I'm happy. I'm happy it's coming back. I'm happy. I was born with McRib in my blood, according to my mama. (laughs) So there go that. There go that. November 1st. It's coming back. We love it. Well, I guess let's go ahead and get back into music. Freshly squeezed. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Freshly squeezed me, baby. Yeah. Okay. No? Was that too much? I mean, was that too much? I'm trying to, it's I'm never, trying to it's, really it's, figure out an ad lib here. It's never too much, Luther. You, you know what? It. I think I'm going to give give you like, is six bars a thing? What is six bars? Like three three sentences? No. How does bars to... work? Parks? No, that's not how it works. Do we really want to explain this? <laughs> it depends on the time signature. Oh, because like I know eight bars, then there's 16, but I want to cut that eight to like a third of that. So let's just do six bars. What is that? Like three sentences though? No, it's not three sentences. No. How do bars work? Because it's not 16 sentences. I looked it up. No, but it's based It's based on, a again, it's based on a, the beats per minute, which is the time signature. Oh, wait, so we need a beat? Damn. <laughs> Mindy ain't got no beat. <laughs> Mindy ain't got, she said, you mean I gotta have rhythm before I have words? You Count mean, me out. <laughs> you, mean, you mean I gotta actually be, be, be like on, on a flow that's not my own? <laughs> Damn, I guess that means I have to make a beat. Mandy needs a, a click track in her ear at all Don't times. do that. Don't do me. Don't do me. Damn. Except for Avril Lavigne songs. She I actually has Avril Lavigne songs down. On a Monday, I am way. Oh shit, that's Ashley Simpson ate it. Yeah. God damn it. I the mean, fact that you knew Ashley Simpson too. 
But it was in the it was in the thread. I'm so impressed by it. It was in Sis, the thread. You didn't just learn the song from the Twitter thread. Knock it off. Okay, you're right. <laughs> but also, I told y'all, I was I grew up on boy bands, in sync, Britney Spears, like that, and then I transitioned. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. okay. So you no longer after that. You know. <laughs> after Justin Timberlake left and sync, she transitioned into not into no longer being I mean, half white. That's what happened. <laughs> no, because no, the real transition was I went from Backstreet Boys and NSYNC to uh -huh. B2K, bitch, because then they started having oh. like, and I was like, oh, them the ones I want right there. <laughs> oh, look at them in their little, you know, yeah, bandana see. over their braids. I, I mean, I was I always. I went through a thing where I loved braids and dreads. Like, I was always that. You, I definitely had Backstreet Boys and Immature on my, from Bop magazine. Yeah, well. You I remember Bop magazine? I do. I had it all over my wall. Yeah, I had them over my wall too. When I was in eighth grade, I had Silk the Shocker and Backstreet Boys but that in, was my, the in my locker. That was the problem. Silk it, the Shocker was so fine. He was illiterate as hell. I never understood anything. He had dyslexic. He never understood anything he said. He was my type though. He was, he was tall, fine. Skinny. He was fine. Tall, skinny, chocolate. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Silk mm. the Shocker was really cute to me in eighth grade. Don't even throw it up now because he's going to have a long tee and baggy pants and I don't want to see it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because. And a, and, 20, then, and a 28 inch chain. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, the fact that niggas really wore chains to their belly button. The fact that it was giving a very deep V and a long, a very tall T. I'm not going to lie. It he was, looks it was like, considered he looks short like sleeve, line. but. I definitely have an ex. Shout out to John. Uh, <laughs> John definitely looked just like Silk the Shocker, bitch. Uh, well, I'm, we'll start off because I know that you're going to hit us with some uh, R&B, R &B. baby. Um, Y'all know that we just had an episode two. Shout out to Antoinette. Yes. Uh, called Meekin and none of us gave a fuck about this Meek Mill album did you? I tried you tried? Did I you, tried did you but what? I tried okay that's where I want to leave it <laughs> I might try again I'll probably try again because I'm getting back into gym you this week you can dust so it off try and try again yes let yourself off and try it's, I, it's not let yourself off <laughs> you don't <laughs> you see what I'm saying? sis did not have this energy for Avril Lavigne complicated she did not Bro, I told you, y'all be making up it's words. It's crazy. Y'all be don't sound in the it's words crazy. out just, all the way. Just gotta embrace, we just got to go to karaoke. We're going to embrace your white side. We're just going to let your, we're gonna let your white we flag are not. fly. You don't even know what song I sing at motherfucking karaoke, bitch. What song do you sing at karaoke? You better call Tyrone. Call him. That's cool. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and, and bring her up. Uh, 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 we're going uh, uh. to sing some Natalie and Bruley. I'm going to bring her ass up. Nothing's right, I'm torn. We gonna sing that. You know that song. I too. don't know the name of the person, but yes. Yeah, you, it's okay. yeah, I know, you know that. that song. You know what? Next week we finna come in here and pay homage to all the white queens. Can we do that? Because most of them. Because I like Atlanta's like, more set shit. Them, oh, Atlanta's more shit is my you, shit. You feel me? Yeah, Fiona Apple. I I don't I don't have any disdain and I'm for like any Gwen level Stefani. of whiteness. I just know people be thinking I'm real racist, and it's just you like are. you hate white people. We gotta I we mean, gotta address that. We gotta address that. They colonized the whole country we're in, and now we're we're we're. Decades and centuries behind well, the West. It's 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 we're decades and centuries, but we decades and centuries ago we would we would have been on the porch. So we still got to acknowledge our privilege in some way. You right. Okay. You right. Okay. But I mean, okay, you right. Mm -hmm. You right. All right. But that one is not better than the other. One is not better than the other. I said one has privilege. Privilege does not make better. Does not mean better. I'm just saying that just means we would have been getting raped. So privilege, privilege, privilege we just been privilege closer just to means, the massa. Privilege to get the just means that we that our skin that our skin indicates that there is a level of privilege. Our treatment is different. That You're is right. what that means. We have to acknowledge that. You're right. Only to the white people though. Fuck them. All right. Well, <laughs> oh God, man. Uh, we is fence to get into. Uh, so you get. So did you try this as well? Ex expensive pain. You tried this? I'm not going to lie. I had no idea about it. This is also a really um, alternative, like, alternative oh, rock Mills album did, title. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Expensive, Expensive Pain, Pain. Um, which maybe we'll bring it up in TV, but it, it now that I finished um, Squid Game. Ooh, girl, we got to talk, talk about it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Again, uh, Scream Man, you ain't got to show this because we ain't playing no Meek on here because Meek be Meekin and uh, ain't nobody got time for this nigga. I didn't. I didn't really listen to. I did. I tried. There was nothing that was memorable that stuck out to me. But also, pe keep in mind, I was also. I spent the last five days fearing for my life for bears in Lake Tahoe. So I really wasn't. Wasn't giving it a good, solid, undivided attention. Um, right. there is a song that I actually want to play. I'm gonna play two today. Okay. Um, I'll start it off me with too. Hippity Hop, and yeah. the Hippity Hop record that I want to play today. Y'all know I'm a fan of just like, just ratchetness, and uh, you can't. Spell Ratchet without Yo Gotti. Uh, although you can, <laughs> I just wanted to say that. But I wanted to play <laughs> Yo Gotti for the record because 
Bitch, I done felt like I had to set the record straight on a couple of you bitches. So I am going to play, again, this is for the record, yo, Gotti, baby, let's go. What happening? And I'm a real nigga, but never in last place, baby. That part for these niggas. Mm. This is definitely Mandy's type of shit. <laughs> Mandy will be like, hey, come over for brunch. And I walk in and it's this. <laughs> How do we play in this? Like, I just be mad at people. The candles be lit. <laughs> the ambiance be set. And, and I'm like, damn. Playing. <laughs> I swear, I was talking to my friend, right? Mm-hmm. We have past lives. And while I tried it in this lifetime and failed mm-hmm. miserably, I for sure was a kingpin in my last life. I swear to God. I swear. There's no way I should feel so motivated and touched by this type of music. Without really, like, I wasn't in the streets. Like, a bitch had food stamps in Section 8, but mm. and we went, like, we went, like, I wasn't mixing Coke in the in the kitchen or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. I told you I was mixing Hamburger Helper five days a week. Mm. Bitch was po. <laughs> and so I don't know why I'm so connected to this type of music, but I love it. And uh, the next one that I wanted to play, actually, will kind of ease into... Um, the R&B just a little bit because mm. it does feature Bia and Kehlani. Hey. Uh, so we're going to play we I Like them. That Shout by, out to Bia. Uh, by T-Pain. And what's crazy about this, we had a whole conversation uh, pre-production with the fact that T-Pain literally sampled himself. Go the fuck off, T-Pain. And got a new Get motherfucking your money, song. Like, so I am here for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is called I Like That featuring Bia and Kehlani. Mia, Mia. Why you acting like a, like a, oh, never mind. Wrong song. I love her voice, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. Waiting for you to ghost right. I can do this. <laughs> I can do this, bro. <laughs> bro, I can do what these girls are doing, bro. You right. You probably could. Okay. That part, okay. (laughs) Hey, so Ish, when you mad, just blame T-Pain. Blame T-Pain that we still want our drinks and dinner paid for. Oh, fuck. Let me stop. Oh, right. Not Kehlani, whole ass making out. T-Pain's drank. (laughs) Let me get some drink. That looked like a Mystic soda. Y'all remember Mystic? <laughs> the Mystic juice? Yeah. They, they still have that? I don't know if they do. It looked radioactive, but it, I, it was I good. Will, I will say this, <laughs> was, the good this, shit. This, this was given T-Pain. This is what I was given and expected from T-Pain. That's a um, vibe. And Kehlani is just beautiful in this fucking video. And yeah, there's that. Mm-hmm. Kehlani, that. What, Kehlani, what's up? Kaylani, what's 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 up? She's beautiful. She namaste in her ass out of issues and drama and raising her baby girl. Go ahead, mama. I love it. Love to you see gonna it. let me could I come in here with my hair half black and half blonde? Sure, for Halloween. <laughs> I hate you. All right. I'm <laughs> that bad. means Corella DeVille, why not? No, it was gonna be like for every day. Oh, okay. All right, never mind. I mean, yes, you could. All right, never mind. It's very white of you, but let me... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, in the spirit of R&B, since we're here, since Mandy... You know Mandy. Mandy is the best at these segues, boy. I tell you what. Nobody knows how to segue better than Mandy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she, she absolutely just, you know, sashayed her way into the, into the R&B realm because she knew that's where I was going to bring y'all anyway. Um, Duh. Motherfucking JoJo. Baby. And you brought, brought her up earlier uh, in the episode. Uh, so. I love JoJo. I love JoJo. This. I, 
I love to see JoJo because, number one, she was also an artist that got signed very, very young, very, very mm -hmm. early, was signed to a horrific prison cell of a deal and has since been able to get her, make her, find her way out of it, just rebrand and rebirth herself as an artist and a performer. And she's on tour, um, or she was on tour. Love it. And... I'm excited. I'm excited to to see this project. She just released a project um, on the first or Friday called "Trying Not to Think About It," and it's deep. This is a very deep project, right? But it's but it's it's sensual, right? It's very um, vulnerable. And JoJo has one of the best voices out. Don't debate me. Debate your mama. And I really, I'm just happy to see her back back on the scene, creating and making music that's really good. So there's a song on this project called "Bid." Um, what stands for what? Bring it down. Okay, I was literally looking at that like, what could that stand for? Bring it down. B I D. Yeah, and I just, I like it. I think it's, I think it's, it's flirty, it's sexy, and yeah, bring it down. Let me play it. She be singing. She be singing. Let go. This Q? Mm -hmm. This vocal stack? <laughs> Jojo. Yeah, that was cute. Singing to my soul, honey. Jojo, See, this, bring this, that ass on this couch, girl. This the type of stuff I be listening to in my house. If it's not Afrobeats, which I'm getting to next. Yeah, this will um, make me cry at home. No, bringing it down. Sexy. Yeah, Burning but some if, incense, if I'm not drinking taking wine a bath. With, okay, maybe in a bath. I'm taking a bath. But when I just be cleaning my house, no, I need to nah, be like, that. Nah, man, nah, fuck nah. everybody. Fuck everybody. That's my type of music. Well, fuck everybody for you <laughs> cleaning your room. Um... <laughs> Um, and, my, and my baseboards. And your baseboards, because that's what we do, okay? Grown mm. bitches. Grown bitches clean their baseboards. Um, shout out to aunties. shout out to all my aunties that know that know to clean the baseboards and that and those two little those two little porcelain uh sides behind your toilet bowl. Don't let them come collect on, dust. Come either. on, aunties. Um yeah, the other song I wanted to play is actually Burner Boy, because we were talking about Afrobeats. If I'm not listening to like sexy sensual R and B, then it's usually Afrobeat. Um Shout out to Alex, too, because I know Alex in there like, yeah, me too, me too. Um, <laughs> so uh, Burner Boy dropped a record with Polo G called One It All. And um, this was also something that, that was that was on repeat for me this weekend. So this is Burner Boy. He doing what need to be done. Always. Anyway. Mm. That's nothing to brag about, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Virgil's Louis collabs have not been that great. I like this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to download it. 
I can add this. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm-mm. All right. Yeah. All right. I ain't mad at that. That's something a little different from Burner Boy. I like that. It is. I like that a lot. Before we get into the shit that we don't like, for those of y'all, again, y'all know I'm new. I'm not really new into New York, but I've been here. You've been here a long time. For about a decade new. now. Yeah, that's not so new since 2012, you live here. next year makes my decade. I've been here nine years. However, I was driving through Lower East Side mm-hmm. uh, this weekend, and one of the things... That was so new for me when I moved to New York. And if you have a story about any experience that you're familiar with, let me know. But I'm riding down the Lower East Side, and I actually really, really, really like Mr. Purple. So we passed the Indigo Hotel mm-hmm. where Mr. Purple is, yes. and there's a huge blow-up fucking rat. Mm. So if you're not from New York, a huge blow-up rat in New York apparently means that there's something there where they're not paying their union members or it's a bad work environment. And I was just like, damn, I like this place. What the fuck they did? And it's just interesting because coming from the South, we're not really unionized in the South as much as it is up here in New York. And so the idea that New York is just such this city, again, I I really do love it. And I love that this is the city that you're from and the city that I'm now in. (laughs) But it's it's called Scabby the Rat. Mm-hmm. And it is actually New York City's symbol of unionized labor. Um, and yeah, despite it's the symbol of the protests, the union protests. But I love that because I'm used to just like picket signs and going out. And, yeah, and now you like, walk by and there's a giant inflatable balloon of a rat. And as a New Yorker, when you see it, yeah. you're like, damn, that's not even an establishment I want to support anymore. Right. Because I know they're mistreating their workers. Right. I just love that New York does shit like that. Like, mm. I can't think of any other city and and things that does stuff like this. Like, New York is just, it's just really amazing. It's also, it ain't shit, but it's amazing at the same time, which is why I know I can't choose my sexuality because it reminds me of niggas. That's that's how you know? (laughs) So New York City reminds me of dating. It reminds me. What? So niggas ain't shit. New York ain't shit. It's dirty. It's smelly. It's messy. It's busy. People are rude. Whoa. But yet... You fucking love it. That's how dating is. It's just like, (laughs) why am I straight? Niggas ain't shit. They cheat. They lie. They show up as as not their representative. And and oftentimes, too, they won't even please you. But fuck it. We're still here. And we go on multiple dates time and time again, wanting to get the beauty out of men. And we do that with New York City. We want, we, we, we love to see the beauty. And you know what's crazy? The only time I really know the beauty of New York. Let me tell y'all, because still nine years later, mm-hmm. when I'm in an Uber, drunk as fuck, <laughs> and now I can't fall asleep in an Uber because no. of sex trafficking in my, right. in my life. <laughs> so it'll Not be, in my life. <laughs> my life, my life matters. But it'll be four o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. And hold on. Actually, I'm not, let me share this story. Hold on. I would like to play some music. I'm on the background oh of me sharing oh, the drama. how much is so because oh, the drama. because honestly mm-hmm. so no. I only know no. <laughs> no you can play any song but this song <laughs> you could play any fucking song but this song uh, <laughs> I did that on purpose <laughs> because <laughs> You have such a history with the song, friend. Mandy don't love okay, me. Okay, okay, here we go. <laughs> Mandy okay. don't respect me. Here we Mandy go. don't love me. There no, we go. We're not, yeah, are you cool with... Uh, no, no, here we go. Okay. So when I... It's 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> this is better for the story. It's way better for the story. So it's 4 a.m., right? <laughs> I'm in an Uber. Uh-huh. Drunk as fuck. <laughs> this is just this like is, damn this is. i done been to four <laughs> bars tonight okay seen about 10 of my friends okay fuck and this is what i say to my fucking self not that i'm from but that i'm here and as i'm leaving home y'all drunk as hell damn the bars closed this 4 a.m because yeah <sighs> covid let us let's us stay open again i look at the skyline uh-huh. i look at the bridges 
and I start looking at From all the lights. From her living room, because she's rich. Oh, well, well, now, but I'm, <laughs> I'm talking about in the Uber on the way there. Uh-huh. And I'm just looking, and I'm like, I'm really fucking in New York fucking city. And my crotch is not on fire, but I am on fire <laughs> thinking, that, <laughs> thinking that I'm living in New York. And I, and I am, and so what's crazy is... Just seeing all of the, the the different pieces of culture that I'm that I've been able to experience, and I'll be honest with you too, I had this conversation with my man coming here within my first week. It was my first time even seeing Hasidic Jews. It was my first time knowing what the fuck halal meant, bitch. If you in Florida, what the fuck is halal? Because I ain't never heard of that word until I motherfucking moved here. So from the halal truck, from from just things being a, I guess blessed and kosher and all that shit, but also just the idea of my career. The job that I wanted coming out of high school mm -hmm. had absolutely nothing to do with finance and or or accounting or real estate based on the fact that I grew up in a city where I wasn't familiar with that. Right. I grew up with I'm either going to work at the outlets, <laughs> a hospital, <laughs> I'm going to do hair. Or I'm going to work at a call center. I cannot imagine Mandy working at the outlets. Oh, I but can't. I did. But I did. Oh. Bitch, I worked at two. I worked at Coach and Route 21. And then I also wow. worked at a, at a call center. So, guys, back in 2012, if you were collecting unemployment from the state of Florida, you probably spoke to me. <laughs> so I was also doing unemployment compensation for the state of Florida in a call center. Like, I've literally done all of the things and. And there's just, been, there's just been so many things that have amassed from coming to New York that while I make fun of your fucking childhood all the time, <laughs> I do love that I'm here now. And there's just certain things that you won't be able to know until you're here. And again, on Twitter, there was a whole thread, this woman, you know, bragging about how she pays her rent up front. She lives in Ohio. Mm. Who the fuck cares about Ohio? I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry if you're in Cleveland, Columbus, and that's all I know about I care Ohio. About Ohio. I, Wait, love, I have else? a lot of good friends in Ohio, from Ohio. Okay, there's two. Name another city outside of Columbus and Cleveland. Cincinnati. Okay, outside of those three. Youngstown. Bitch, where the fuck is that? I don't know, but it's a lot of black people there. <laughs> Toledo. I'm not. Do, I'm not doing this. Toledo. I'm not. You never been to Toledo? Ain't that in Arizona? No. Parks knows where Toledo is. Toledo actually is not that far from New York. Oh, well, see, y'all don't count both of y'all. And how you guys <laughs> What do you mean? I'm <laughs> asking somebody else who's from who's from New York well, State. Well, anyways, anyways, we don't live here for the struggle. We live here for not only the opportunity, but what New York has to give. And I love it. So was this on the list of things you didn't give a fuck about? I'm no, trying to figure out what's going We can get into that. Was. We can get into that. This was in my evergreen because literally I had a heartfelt had a moment when I saw the 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 rat this weekend. Um, oh, the rat made you appreciate. The rat New made York. me appreciate New York because I like you were this like, is yeah, cool. I'm on the side of the service workers. You know what Fuck I mean? Not a, yeah. not a blow up rat. That's cool. Like I love that you know New Yorkans come together for that. There's you a, fucking New Yankees. Yorkans. There's New a Yorkans. Couple, there's a couple places <laughs> I'd like to put an inflatable rat in front of. Ooh. Um, oh, oh, oh. Either way. Oh. Either way. <laughs> Hold on, damn! I'm not quick enough with the good shot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, let's get into the shit that we do not care about. And I would like to start off yes. with Little Fizz. Little okay. Fizzle My Nizzle apologizing to that of Omarion. Um, salute. Thank you. Sorry. I want to ask you now. So let me give you a backstory. So as you guys know, Millennium Tour is back and going. Love it. I, I want to go. I already went. So I, I feel go. like I saw it already. Uh, Lil Fizz, however, decided to apologize publicly to Omarion on stage yeah. regarding smashing and dating his baby mother, I April love Jones. You love to see it. Um, to me, I think we've said that the disrespect, the apology does have to be as loud as the disrespect. That's correct. So I love that he did this here, but I also feel like he only did it for a check and for the fact that it didn't work out. I feel like had it worked out and April been maybe everything he assumed it to be in the beginning because he was very loud in that relationship. He was very proud of that relationship. Yeah. And so I feel that if everything panned out how he thought him and April to be because they were such friends, I don't think we would be seeing this apology. Um, I do. I don't, I don't know how much you can speak on it because you were on TV with these folks. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't. This is this definitely falls under things I don't give a fuck about more so because I really do think that everybody has grown and has moved on. So I think the timing is a little is a little interesting, but. Nonetheless, I, I respect an apology. I do. I respect. I respect an apology. I think the apology was was, was well deserved. All right. So, but so also, Bridget, but so also, Omarion has always taken the high road in this situation, 
And yeah. I think taking the high road in the situation has prevented the situation from really getting nasty, right? And I just think if there's if there's one person that can, you know what I'm saying? Like Omarion was in control of this whole narrative. Fizz and April could have done whatever they wanted to do. Omarion was like, I'm grown. I only care about my kids. Do your thing. But also, Bridget. Leave me out of it. You I respect that. You are in a relationship yeah. that although there are not kids, there's a lot of history and memories yeah. and all of those things of already course. building up. So I date your nigga. Uh-huh. Right? I date your nigga. Uh-huh. Is, does, does my apology make up for that? If me and him do not work out? No. My point. If I be like, oh my God, but we can make so much money on the podcast, come back, I'm going to apologize on air, and then we go back to business. I feel like, realistically, that's what this is. This was an apology because we have to get to a bag, and this is something that has to be addressed. We talk about it all the time on this podcast. Unfortunately, we come in here every fucking Monday. There's a lot of things that we literally sometimes cannot leave unaddressed. It was only right that this be addressed up front because it would be almost expected. But men don't... So, so I, men I, don't... Men don't... We've talked about this a lot. Men don't hold, a, hold grudges the same way that women do. Men are able to get over these kinds of things quicker with each other than, than we women. We just talked about how men don't get over fucking... They don't get over shit from middle women. school. But that's because uh, a lot of men hate women. Uh, so they're not going to let no shit go ooh, from women. Not but they'll let women. shit go... Listen. Oh, they're going to come for us in our comments because they be they saying we're so... We are so they dragging can. men they all can. the time on this podcast. They can. They can. <laughs> y'all, a lot of y'all out here and, and you would think that you date your homeboys the way that... Y'all ca- y'all cape for them and y'all stand by them and y'all don't have that energy for a lot of the women that you deal with because a lot of y'all believe women ain't shit. And unfortunately, that's true sometimes. Your friends ain't shit, really. But your friends also ain't shit either. You know either. what? People ain't shit. And let's, so, just, let's just say it there. And so for this to be, I mean, it's great, but I guess, I mean, I guess, again, I don't, I don't care enough. I'm not, I don't care enough. I think, I think if it's genuine, I respect it. I've, I've always respected Omarion's take on this, which, which was... It's not my business. I'm taking the high road. The only thing I'm concerned about is my children. And I think I think that's the part that we don't we don't get to see very often. It's like Omarion prioritized his peace and his children. I I'm I applaud that. I think that's great and commendable. So All that's right. what he should be doing. Well, shout out to five foot four Omarion. Shout out um, to everybody. Shout out to people being being mature, emotionally mature, and at least trying to to emotionally be mature and and move the fuck on when it's time it's just a whole bag involved um <laughs> that's it i don't think this is genuine i mean at all, but, listen but i, but but, but I think but hold on here there but we do a lot of shit in most sometimes that that is compromising for the sake of a bag we've all worked with people we don't like we've all mm. we've all we've all we've all we've all bit our tongue in, in certain situations and conversations when we probably wanted to throw verbal daggers at somebody but we kept it cute because of the job because of the space I think we've all done that. But that's so where, I don't think but, this but, is but, any different. But, but that is where, and I think that's where you draw the line in a conversation between something that's genuine and something that's not. This was a personal thing that Fizz did. And his apology happened in business, if you get what I mean. So my but so my question is then I mean, but in, in but business, you're, but you're in, dealing, in, but you're dealing with two high with two public profile celebrities whose business whose business is personal but also but also so there is no line drawn from personal and business not for them don't say that because i'll be out here trying to keep everything corporatized bitch get you your try. feelings out of it you try but it's but it's it's almost impossible that's why that's why that's why when people are always like well you can't you know you can't be upset about things that are, you can't take business personal yes you can a lot of business is personal the only mm. difference is the only difference is you have to weigh you have to weigh the risk. There's consequences to every decision. So if you're gonna take it personal, make sure that the feelings that you process and that you decide to to, to act on are gonna benefit you professionally. If not, then you just wasting your time. And it wasn't it's it's a it's pointless to be in business with somebody whose emotions you can't control. But that's the thing you, you can't, can't control, control your emotions anyone, around. But you can't control anyone's emotions. No, I'm saying I, control right. your emotions around. I would not work with somebody that even if I didn't like them, I would not work with somebody that I did not respect the business with more than I was personally invested. And I think with this situation with them, they've known each other since they were kids. They've right. been working together since they were kids before April. But that's what I'm so, saying. I think at this point, I respect the business we have together. Yeah. And that's it. Well then, I mean, but the but the, like you said, the disrespect was still public. So whether it's personal or professional, it's still public. Speaking of, mm-hmm. <laughs> if we get into something else we don't care about, 
Because these niggas ain't shit. And we talking about another ain't shit nigga. <laughs> uh, Nick Cannon, guys, has decided to go on Drink Champs. And I want to shout out... Uh, to, I love to Nori. Nori. Shout out to Nori. We hopefully we can get on there, but he's also a, a label mate of mine. Though. Shout out to Nori and DJ Effin. Yes. Um, on their latest episode with Nick Cannon, Nick Cannon decided to go on there um, and say that uh, he will pretty much be celibate until 2022. He says, "I ain't even got that Wait. many compared to." I'm like low on the totem pole, but I love all my kids. He said, making a shocking revelation. I told you, he did admit, however, to being celibate now. I think they were talking about the comparison of him and his amount of kids so to other people. He's... He is the father of seven, by the way. Okay. And I believe with seven kids, he has five baby moms because two are sets of twins. Um, he did say he's going to make it to 2022 uh, as being celibate. However, I want to give a huge... Hold on. You are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. And I want to give you that only so, because three months? Nigga, a quarter? So <laughs> three nigga. three months. Three. So we're going to go three months without, without fucking. Nigga, depending on what so bitch you're means... fucking right now, that could mean two cycles. <laughs> That's it. So it's, <laughs> it's giving two cycles. So what you're saying is you're not going to have any cancer children or Leo children. <laughs> but after that, we might be coming up on Virgo season. I just feel feel like okay you could have sex on new year's um, uh, yeah and then and he gonna bust out of virgo i guess but Go you know ahead, what this like is this is and no one wanted to give me this <sighs> during the the pandemic i also said i was celibate yeah. but it was also because i was locked in my house so i too was celibate for three months not by choice <laughs> i mean <laughs> <laughs> it's not the same. why is it not by no because i could have flew a nigga here if he was willing to come to the epicenter Cause flights was like seventeen dollars, Bridget. I never, you were I not never. Doing I swear that. to God, I swear you to God, were not that. doing that. I swear to God, there was a nigga in North Carolina. I said, baby, hey, the flight is seventeen dollars round trip, and I was like, and I could put you on Delta. It ain't even Spirit, baby. Let me put you on Delta real quick. In April of twenty twenty, <sighs> the flight was seventeen dollars for this little nigga in North Carolina to come up, and. I guess he was scared at the epicenter. My pussy was not worth the epicenter, which sucks for, to me because I wanted to believe my pussy was worth any of your life for. You know what I mean? Like, I wanted to think I had that power. But, nigga, because I was in New York, all the niggas I invited to fly here, and it was only three, but my max was $52 Damn, on the flight. Damn, that makes me feel mad. That makes me feel mad good. My man got on a plane and flew across the country from New York to LA to see me? me in the middle of the pandemic. Okay, What's well, that wait, 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 wait. There's a difference. There's a difference. Uh -huh. The middle of the pandemic. Bitch, I had my nigga by May. Oh, yeah. But in March that's and true. April, that's true. That's true. it that's was true. the beginning of the pandemic where once we realized yeah. it wasn't only two weeks, bitch, because I started a whole nother Girona <laughs> Report podcast <laughs> thinking, okay, I could just pod for two weeks about what this shit feels like. No, nigga. Right. When I found out the whole country and world was on lockdown... I was, I was like, like oh damn. My God. He got on a he got on a flight from L, from New York to LA to come see me. Yeah, but that was that was in May, right? Yeah. That that to me is the middle. I'm talking about the beginning. That was not the middle of the pandemic. Two months in is not the middle. The oh. middle was like a year ago. <laughs> oh, well, well well in the beginning of the pandemic, I ended up finding a nigga. <laughs> and then <laughs> You were like, I think I'm gonna park here. <laughs> but and basically by the middle of the pandemic, oh, yeah, he was, the, he he was, was even fucking me COVID positive. He so I really fell up. So actually my pussy is worth dying for if you really think about it. Uh, but there's that. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to say, Nick Cannon, this is not anything to brag about being celibate until 2022 when we are already in October, sir. Um, beyond that, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about, I wanted to shout out our discord chat. If you are a part of our Patreon, that is patreon.com backslash see the thing is pod. Uh, there was an announcement made this week that tank will be releasing his very last album and be performing for the very last time. Mm. And our Discord actually started a conversation regarding maybe Tank getting on a Versus mm. with Tyrese. No. Now, thoughts? No. Because this was our Discord conversation. I just want to bring it to the forefront. I'm going to go with no. Who, could you see Tyrese or Tank respectively going against someone else? I could see Tyrese and Genuine maybe. Oh, no, but they did the T, what, what is it? TGT, T so did Tank. Oh wait, Tank they were also all in, in it. that group. Oh shit! Tank, Genuine, and Tyrese—that was TGT. Oh, but I feel like but, but Tank I, was the least of the two accomplished. I feel like for well, sure. I wouldn't say least accomplished because he still be touring his ass off and still be making money because the aunties be showing up for Tank. You hear me? But I've been, in, I've been to it, Tank shows and it, they sell out and he makes bread. What so are the shout venues out to Tank. though? Um, 
like Sony Hall, Nokia Theater type venues. Um, oh, my podcast theaters. Okay. All right. He's touring. Yeah, you're touring. I know, but I, I'm in I'm the just same a, venue. Just a so pod- he's, I'm just a he's podcaster. Not, he's, he's been out for like 15 he's, years. He's not washed. If you're All not, right. he's not washed. If y'all doing the same venues, because you're not washed. So uh, okay, debatable. So you you wash. I'm not washed, but I'm a podcast. That if, doesn't mean if, that if, if he's doing tours like J. He's Cole, per- he's performing songs from 15 years ago. I'm not doing shows in Barclay. He's performing songs from 15 years ago. All I know is this is why I be acting like. My shit don't stink because if I'm doing show podcast shows in the same venues as a Tank, a Rick Ross, a Bo- like I'm sorry, this is why I be acting like I ain't shit or I am the shit. And sorry guys, uh, if I'm not humble enough for you guys, but no, that's crazy that we're doing the same venues. That's all, bitch. You do the same venues as him. Yeah, I did like Sony you just Hall. did Sony Hall. I know, but he does. I know, weekend. but he gets tapped to do bigger, bigger events. He does Essence Fest every year. He does. He does a number. He does a number of, of shows in LA in the California area because he he lives in LA. But he does shows everywhere: Vegas, Texas, Midwest, St. Louis. Has he's, he had a residency? He's from DC. No, but he could. Mm. I mean, keep in mind too. He's also, I believe, still losing hearing in one of his ears. So oh, let's make excuses now. So now that's not an excuse. That's life. Shit happens. If you lost your voice forever doing all the fucking screaming and drinking that you've been I doing do. at 35, I do a whole lot. you would be in a bad place. No, I've been investing. I'm just, I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying. At, so is he. Bitch, the same way. So is he. The same way Tina Turner insured her motherfucking so legs. Is he. I'm about to insure this voice, bitch. Think so it's a is game. He. What I'm saying to you is there's a lot of other singers that we can look at that had bigger records than Tank and they ain't got Tank money. So then I'm asking you. Who would Tank or Tyrese go against? Well, I was saying I think Tyrese could go against Genuine. Okay. I think they have enough records. They've been out the same amount of time and had like a, a good like five to ten year spurt of like it being a, a Okay, a, a then hits. if I really had to throw down on maybe just the caliber, if you're saying he has hits, let's do Tank and Bobby Valentino. Mm. Bobby Valentino maybe has five hits. Maybe. And so does Tank. If he has a hit at all. Damn, you know who I would love... <laughs> do you know who I would love to see? Um, I, I mean, Slow Down was really so, Bobby Valentino's jam. But no, the only... Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry, I just want to get to know you. That was a good song. Um, slow Down. He was such a dick when I interviewed him. Um, well, he's small. Small men, <laughs> small men are angry at the world. They um, are. Yeah, they are. Um, no, I... Damn, who could... Who could you know who I would like to see a versus with? And I wouldn't even mm. want it to be a versus. I would just want it to be a fucking concert. Talk to me. Like- Tank and Mario. I would love a con- I would love that to be a fucking concert. You could turn, you could, you could do a versus and make it a concert. And that would be a vibe. Because those two, th- those two men can sing their fucking asses they off can. in their sleep. So But well, Mario would definitely win on that too. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, you just don't like Tank. You have it out for Tank. I don't have it out for Tank, but I can't. I tank. can't think of one Tank like maybe I make deserve it. for you to go oh. find somebody okay. else. Maybe I yeah. deserve. That and then his, that's that it, was baby. A huge record for him. So we got a three minute and twenty seven second when tour. We, I mean, that was another song he had. Wait, when we? Yeah. For when we? It's recent. Um, but that was with someone else. Other people were on that song. No, it's just his song. Um. Scream Man, can you pull up Tank's discography? Please, because I am... Oh, sitting- Bobby Valentino, Tell Me was a good song. No, no, no. Uh, no, tell Bobby. Me. Can you pull up, um, can you pull up uh, Tank's discography? Because I need Tank's to know, discography? outside of those two songs, please don't go. Please, okay, so he got three songs. Okay, so yeah, we, we can play him again. We're going to keep going. Freaky? I don't remember Freaky. I don't remember that. I break your six. I can't let you. This is ty- this is um this is tanks. This, is, this is tanks, right? Yeah, girl. And look, I'm you only know shit one on it. man doing what I can. That was a good song too. Oh, we got four. That's a good song too. <laughs> okay. Name no nah, nah, name name four name four Mario songs because you think Mario going to beat Tank. So name four Mario songs. Are you serious? If we yes. pull up Mario's discography, we have name just a friend. Four, name we four have Mario just a friend. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. We have the uh Let Me, me Love You. Uh, we have Let Me Love You. Braid my hair. That's hold three. on, hold on. You're saying more th- we have uh the What other- else? Hold on, hold on. Bitch, you're interrupting me. <laughs> I'm just trying to find No I don't know. I don't know nothing. How do else. I breathe? How do I breathe with that music for love? What song? Bro, how does you... that go? What? How Which does one? breathe for love go? Break up, break up, music for Bitch. love. How does that even go? <laughs> how do I breathe? How do I breathe? <laughs> That's how do I live without you by Trisha Yearwood. <laughs> No, how do I breathe is a good song. Hold on, bitch, because you ain't gonna play me whole. I, I want you these... to find it because I don't know none of these other how songs. How do I breathe? That's how it goes. And when I play it, bitch, you gonna know that that's I'm singing it right. Damn, pussy. I don't, I'm only seeing three songs up here that that could go toe to toe with Tank. Bro. Only three. So guys, this is how do I breathe? You know this song. You absolutely. How do I breathe? Told you, bitch. It was the same yeah, this cadence. Is a good song. Thank you. Go back you to the disguise. Sound, this is not what you. Bitch, was, this is not how I, you sounded. <laughs> this was not the melody you sang for the record. <laughs> Bro, I don't have a melody. <laughs> yeah, this was it's a good so song. Long for being here, being next to you. <laughs> You're you right. Know, this is a good song. This is a good song. We can go back to the list. Okay, go back, we can go back, to, back the to the list. Go, go back, back to the, to the list. list. We can go back to the list. Go back to the list. Goddamn scream, man. Get off the video. We're going to go back to the list. Alex reminiscing right now. <laughs> he was singing this to a girl. He was singing this to a girl in 2007. <laughs> I mean, Mario has... Hold on. Here we go. Let me love you, just a friend. Yes, let me How love could you. you crying out for me? Love it. Be beautiful. Um, break up. Braid my hair. Somebody else featuring Nicki Minaj. There we go, nigga. Oh, okay, so you going down the list of his, but you just yeah. was going to bypass all of Tank's records. You didn't we, read. She we, didn't read not one song because, on Tank's because list. She out, just kept no, going. No, because outside of Tank's list, I knew four, and we stopped at four. No, you, we stopped at four. We okay, let's have a versus with five say, songs. Let's have a versus with five songs. Scroll then, then up, then scroll just... back up to Tank. Like I said, Mandy got it out for Tank, and I don't know what Tank did to her in the past life. Tank did nothing to me. I don't know that, man. You're going to give me this aux right now because we're about to play these sex music. Yes, Emergency. Girl, girl, you don't know emergency. Sing emergency right sex, now. No, sex music sex, is sex, my sex shit. An emergency. You just, you just named the title. Sing emergency I'm, I'm, right now because it's on the list. Yeah, but sing it. No, what is it? sex <laughs> music is my shit. Sing emergency. I charge the sex. I charge. Sing I charge to sing. You got a budget, bitch? Yes. You Actually, budget? you know I'm rich, bitch. I'll pay your ass. Now she play with it. See, I told y'all she was my rich friend. Play with it. Bitch. She admitted it at one hour and forty five <laughs> minutes. She admitted that she's my rich friend. Go Y'all ahead. heard it here first. Nah, bitch, because you don't know emergency while you sit here. I didn't, I didn't want to. No, I didn't want to sing emergency. Sex music is my. And y'all, just so y'all know, this argument holds no validity except out of our <laughs> Discord chat, and they were going at it, bitch. I was like, like this here. This is a, this, this is what this happens is on Discord. <laughs> this is a Discord chat right here. Ooh, Go ahead. Sex music was my shit. Mm. This got no radio spins. What are you talking about? Never heard the song in my life. Sex music. I'm not Never paying you this? for that. I'm not paying you for that. <laughs> you don't need to know for this. Oh, it's a sample. Like his most recent that he could have kept himself. Yo, you have to relax. <laughs> okay. Play it. Play it. Nah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna pick another one. We yeah, gonna play because, emergency. Yeah, because for no you. one knows that one. We're gonna play emergency for you because you don't hey, know it. Hey, if you're listening right now, please let us know if you knew that. She's you the disrespect, the slander for tank is crazy to me. Who, what list is, yeah, this is this is a whole other list. Guest appearances. Ooh, guest Scroll appearances. Scroll up, scream in, please. He just left. He just left us. Nah, this right here, though, I'm about to. Yeah, see this, how she's playing all these songs we don't know? This was my shit, though. This was a vibe. If you you've definitely heard this song before, Mandy. There's no way you haven't heard this. Turn down the bed. Okay, so we made it to four songs, four and a half. Inside, Inside my head. head. See, you know this song. Cool, but it's not beating Tyrese or well, Mario we weren't, we weren't or anybody Tyrese. else. It's not beating Mario. Okay. So at this point, he could just do a versus for a check. Because he's not beating anyone that he goes against. But there we go. I guess. I mean, I'm here with you, Bridget. Mm. If you really are that confident, this song is good. This is a win. But that's his one win. This is his one win. Okay, he got two. This is cute, too. Okay, this is cute. 
Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Are y'all ready? Turn it down. You know who he can go against? Who? Avant. Oh. Boom. That is a match. Tell me I don't know. If I'm That's a match. Avant and Tank. Avant and this Tank. This is my shit. Because if you really know Avant music, he has a catalog like Tank. Not really much radio play, but let's do Avant and Tank. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not going to lie. I love this song. This, this is probably shit? my favorite song of him. Go there. This is yeah. Sex Playlist quality version. But let's do Tank, tank and Avant. You like that? You like yeah. that too, right? You like that too, Savon? You like that part? Do you remember this? Avant and... Do you remember this song? No, it sounds like church. Take it off. The fact that you I'm said sorry. this sounds like church. It does sound like it church. It sounds like D'Angelo. I hear him. Him and D'Angelo have the same style of vocals. They are the, um, vocals, yes. Yeah, you got it. All right, well... um. Tank and Avant. Damn, that would be a lot. Right? Look at me. Look at me. At, and if y'all do that versus, I'm going to sue y'all because I said it. It's, <laughs> I own stake in that. Um, but Damn, no. Damn, Avant. Right? Damn, Avant. If y'all didn't know who Avant was, if you Ooh. one of our younger listeners, if you one of our younger listeners and don't know this, this is for the aunties then and y'all don't appreciate Avant. right now. Come on, hold on. Let this ride. I got your, your legs spread all over the bed. If you in your in office right now, baby. Sheets. Wow, that's why I know. The, the only thing on your mind is sex in me, girl. I can feel the temperature rising. You can feel me just too. It's going to be a bumpy ride. What we came to hey, do when if we you don't know this song, you're too young to be listening to this motherfucking podcast, yeah. okay? Okay. This is for the uncles and aunties. Wow. And if you have not heard this song, go ahead and download it. This is not an ad, but I just love me this motherfucking song right here. We just showed our age. For the God right. damn. We're like, yo, Tank and Avon. <laughs> Mind you, that's a, that is definitely a concert I would go to that on a date. Is, on a date. That is yes. giving what yes. it needs to give. I ain't even yes. gonna hold you. All right, look at us setting wow. up some verses over here Listen, that ain't been said Listen, before. Swiss, we are happy to host the next verses of Tank and Avon. We sure are. We, we would show definitely are. host that as non -tees. We sure are. Well, let's get into before we get up out of here. Mm. Uh, I wanted to bring back TV and yes. what we've been watching. Uh, before oh, we get into girl. like new shit, I did want to bring back kind of the, uh, again, spoiler alert, if you have not finished Squid Game now, it has, however, surpassed as the number one show on Netflix of all time as far as streaming, views, um, and all of that, which is super dope. Like I said, it was dubbed really well, so if you're like me who don't really like uh, seeing dubbed movies or reading subscripts, the the dub is actually not bad. Um, however, I finished it, and it, it brought me back to a conversation that you and I had. Mm -hmm. So, again, spoiler alert, one of the things that we find out is that the person who actually created the game had all this money mm -hmm. and realized that whether you have all the money in the world or no money at all or, or, and are in debt, you still will be unhappy. You still will be unfulfilled. And it was kind of like his game to even see if there were any more good people mm -hmm. left in the world that knows how to just kind of enjoy life without the pressure of constantly making money or still making all the money you could possibly make and still be unfulfilled and unhappy. Mm -hmm. And Bridget, you and I have had that conversation a lot based on the ebbs and flows of our financial statuses through our years. And again, you guys can hear more of that on our Patreon. But the, the actual idea that we do grow up and think that money is the resolution to all things as, in terms of our problems. Mm -hmm. And the idea that, too, we were also listening and jamming to the song that more money, more problems. Right. And I really looked at this show from a socioeconomic standpoint upon mm -hmm. watching it. Yeah. And when I watched it full circle and saw that it was like, whether you have all the money in the world or no money at all, unless you're happy with who you are and how you're living your life... Money holds no weight in that. And I really loved that that was the takeaway from this. Um, that wasn't my takeaway. What was your takeaway? My takeaway was a little darker than that. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> well, because, I mean, it really, the enemy in this whole entire thing is capitalism. That's the of enemy. Of course. But That's also, but also, but I don't think it's that money doesn't make you happy. I think these people are, I think people, the people with money in this situation weren't unhappy. They were just bored. 
and the things that they considered minuscule in life, things that were just that, that we would people? consider luxury, people were willing to die for. People are willing to die for the things that billionaires take that billionaires don't think anything of. That was my mm. takeaway. And also, I mean, and if you have not watched it yet, I I strongly encourage you to watch it. Um, it is very gruesome and brutal. Very gruesome. Um, and and some parts are a little bit sad. Um, but I think overall, right, the the main themes around this are um, survival mode because at some point in the game they give you the option to leave. And people leave and then they re- they get back to their lives mm-hmm. and they realize and how, how shitty their lives are and how in debt they are and how troubled they are. And they realize that, that that the only thing worse than even attempting to do something different is to stay in the same place. So, in, it, Which is, that part is very interesting that people were willing to risk death mm-hmm. than to live in debt. And I like I said, knowing how I grew up mm-hmm. and talking to my mom, over just the last couple of years, the idea that so many people live check to check and the idea that so many people can't afford an ex- uh, an emergency. Right. So many people, even my mom, I was talking for uh, up until recently, she was still taking cash advances because bills were not paid at the time in which she was expecting a check. Because right. when you get a check biweekly, sometimes you're it's not a line behind. that we are always, always behind. behind. You never catch up. And the idea that living that way. Which is survival mode. It, but living that way sometimes is not even worth it to the fact that you would risk death with the opportunity to have money and see a better life. But also these people are risking, they didn't even, when they left the game, it was like, they didn't even know how much money necessarily they no. were going to get. Right. So you don't even know. It's like, that's, that's the part that's crazy. It's like, you'll risk your entire life for, for an amount, for an, for a, an unknown amount of money, but anything that could, that could take you out of your situation. So in actuality, in my mind, it's not so much that money couldn't buy you happiness, but like none of these people knew how to live. They, they had no quality of life. The only thing that would bring them out of that space was the adrenaline rush and the, of the competition and, and hopefully getting beyond and surviving the game. Which is crazy because um, outside of, I would say, living in debt, mm-hmm. there's so many people now even listening to us. You can be sitting at your work desk right now. You could be working from home even. Mm-hmm. There's so many people that still have not found happiness, even if right. their bills are paid. Right. Even if their bills are paid, even if they're able to put food in their children's mouths, even with a roof over their head, mm-hmm. they still have not found happiness in the existence of their life. And I think that that was interesting in watching this. Well, because all of these people's lives were centered around the fact, were centered yeah. around money because they didn't have yeah, any. Because they didn't have any. So there was no life outside of the pursuit of money, which I think I think is a lot of a lot of people. There's no happiness outside of life. Outside of the pursuit of money. I love that you added that word too, because the idea as well, even if you go back to watching, we spoke about Will earlier, but if you go back to watching the pursuit of happiness, Mm -hmm. he attached the pursuit of happiness to landing this job that would essentially take him and his child out of living in the homeless shelters that would take him into a place that he felt like would be better. So the idea that the pursuit of money is the pursuit of happiness here in a capitalistic, uh, economy in, in which we live here in in the u.s but to also know that this wasn't a, a, a movie based out of korea that is what our lives are mm-hmm. we grow up to know that we okay we need the house we need this and by the way i don't know if y'all know bitch milk a bitch just went to the grocery store what the fuck is happening with the cows screaming can you find it bitch milk hold on milk. half and half no 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 I was making mashed potatoes, so I was like, okay, oh, I'm bitch just me. saying I wouldn't know the cost of milk because I don't drink but milk. But it's almond, it's milk. The whole milk section, bitch, was high. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening with milk? Mm. Scream in, if you're back there, could you look up? You you can look it up. He, oh, he can't hear. Could you please look up what's going on with why <laughs> milk prices are going up? I just don't understand it. And what's crazy is mm-hmm. if you're on Wick. Yeah. Or if you're rich, for whatever reason, the necessities which in which we would get on a wick. So right. the bread, the rice, the cereal, yep. the milk, those are the things in which we Eggs. know. Oh, here we go. <laughs> and I did see this. Rising Actually posted today. Could make milk more expensive. There we go. So wow. for those of y'all who are it says the rising temperatures, again, global fucking warming. Science. Ugh, fuck. <laughs> is the reason uh, why we may be seeing a rise in milk. And I have, it says, in fact, there's an adage in the dairy industry along the lines of 
Only five people in the world know how milk is priced in the U.S. and four of them are dead. Mm. So there we go. One factor that could push prices higher is rising temperatures caused by climate change. Wow. Researchers have found that when temperatures spike, dairy cows may respond by producing less milk supply and demand. Wow. It ain't even really science all the way as much as it is fucking economics. <sighs> this is crazy. crazy. I don't even drink milk. That's why I wouldn't even know about this. Yeah, but I knew about this because, bitch, I was like, oh, I'm making a little loaded mashed potato. Let me get some uh, the whipping cream and whipping right. cream is it's milk. Just, it's just inflation. It's just <sighs> agricultural economics, which, which also was, was an element in Squid Game that I noticed, too. It's that there was a certain set of rules, right? And mm. they were they were centered around quote unquote morals to keep to keep everything equal in an oh, equal playing field. You talking about the lunch, the yeah. egg? Yeah, and he went. Yep. So, but it but it wasn't really an equal playing field because mm -hmm. you were still able to be dis like disenfranchised within that framework. But because of greed. Well, not even just because Humans. of greed. It he's not breaking the rules, right? Like so, towards the end when they got the marbles, the game with the marbles. <laughs> yes. And the guy totally, totally like, cheated, and the one of the guys totally cheated the other guy, right? And they had they had agreed, they had teamed up to agree to be, to be a pair. And one decided halfway through the game when he realized that both of them couldn't win, he decided to switch up, and cheated him out of the game, yeah. and ended up getting him killed. And in those kind of moments, it it's very it's it reminds me even more so of of America because we believe that just because something is law, that it's just. Mm. or that it's uh, that it's fair right rather as opposed to as opposed to acknowledging the fact that the con that the construct the system altogether was was founded and rooted in continuing to disable those who have less and that's exactly what this what this what this game represented to me too so definitely watch squid game it's a mind fuck um and if you are a critical thinker you're an overthinker. It's definitely a game. It's definitely a show that you will sit there and be completely entranced by because absolutely, it's intense. Absolutely. One of the uh, other shows that I guess I watched over this week, um, if you haven't now, the Britney versus Spears doc on Netflix oh. is way different than the one that we spoke of recently. Okay. Um, I, I also want to give, hold on, we got to give an applause because it's Britney, bitch. Oh. And um, just so y'all know, if you're not aware... Jamie Spears has been removed as the conservator 13 years later mm. on the conservatorship that we discussed with Britney Spears. Um, so mm. that's amazing. And can I also tell you why I really love Britney? Bitch, on the day that this was announced, that bitch took to Instagram to post nude, and I am here for it. Shout out to Britney Spears posting nude in, in a whole fuck you. Um, it's also just very interesting, this doc goes into these journalists that have been following her for years. You get to see more of the relationships that weren't mentioned in the New York Times mm. um, documentary that we spoke on earlier. So I watched that. Also, if you haven't yet, last night I got to watch Sons of Newark. Oh, girl. Oh. Amazing. If you, It is a two-hour <sighs> film that kind of dates back to the childhood of Tony Soprano. If you are a fan of The Sopranos, it goes back into, I believe, the 60s, 50s or 60s yep. um, in Newark, New Jersey, and goes into pretty much the, the the mob, mafia, and the dynamics of family as it pertains to the Italians and black community as they're fighting for turf, essentially, yep. in Newark, New Jersey. Yep. And it's just really good because you just see a dynamic of, of like I said, um, mafia shit, um, but also how... African Americans mm -hmm. held a lot of power and stake there, and you get to see kind of why Tony Soprano became who the fuck he became in The Sopranos, you know. In The Sopranos, and I love too that it end with "Got myself a gun." Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, it's just it's it's well done. James, it this is. is this is James Gandolfini's son, I believe. Um, who plays really the young version of him, and so it's really dope. Uh, to watch that, just like it's. I mean. BMF also speaking of speaking of know, speaking, of sons, speaking of sons speaking of sons playing their fathers. I need your login. <laughs> oh yes, we got to I got to give it to you. Um yes, the the BMF show on on Stars is really incredible if you have not gotten a chance to. If you don't have a Stars login, you should borrow somebody else's and make sure or you watch BMF. Or just pay for it. Or just pay for it. I mean if although you saw Netflix was going up I already, Bitch, I already, eighteen dollars. I pay eighteen dollars. Me already. too. At this point, yeah, I'm over it. It started at nine ninety nine, my nigga. <sighs> well, you know how what? we doubled. It's a yeah, it's a lot. We've come a long way, Netflix. Shit. Um, 
I, I feel like if I have to pay for extra HD, I need, they need to go ahead and pay for my upgrade of my television. But <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Um, yeah, I, I saw Sons of Newark. It was, it was fantastic. Uh, another a movie I went to see over the weekend was um, Venom, the, the, the sequel to Venom. Uh, there Will Be Carnage. It's pretty great as well. Definitely, excuse me, something worth checking out. It's it's like an hour and a half. It's with um Woody Woody Harrelson, isn't it? Um, it's okay. pretty good. Also, I want to shout out to all my aunties that watched the Real Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs> um, unfortunately, we have received the news that Portia and Cynthia. I know. Will are y'all gonna returning. even watch now? I don't know who the fuck else they could bring on. Who are you like? Who I mean, else mind is you, there? Portia was holding the middle peach, so it'll be interesting. Um, I really liked my kill. And Cynthia's dynamic, although mm. she was boring, I liked the progress of their relationship on screen. Um, and y'all know I wanted the mess of Portia with Simon, but I don't think we're going to get that. So there's that. Mm. Did we miss anything today, Bridget? I think we covered all the fucking bases, if I'm being Did honest. We? I do. Did we? Now, you got the aux, which means you have full control of what the fuck we're getting out of here on. Mm. But before we get out of uh, all of this, it has... It, it has been one full year. Um, and I want to go ahead and before anything, I want to say thank you kindly and greatly to Parks, who has been our engineer yes. for the last year. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Savon, who does everything with our uploads, our descriptions, our titles, helps us with cover art. He does everything. Scream Man, y'all finally put a face to him. So shout out to Alex. He makes this show flow so seamlessly. And then I want to give a shout out to everyone who's been behind the camera um, and engineering, including Casey, Josh, Carl, and Brennan. Did yes. I miss anyone out of that? I mean, we could we could thank Ian and Corey. There and we go. Joe. <laughs> oh, the network. I the was network? just talking about who's here every day, but shout out to Joe Budden. I want to shout out to Ian. Shout out to Corey. Shout out to the network. Um, it's been a year. We are celebrating. It's been a fucking year. We're celebrating. Mandy and I have worked really hard. Thank you. Thank you for ushering Not me. Not you in. playing the same song. I thought you was going to get creative. No. Was it the oh, same song? What same song? Oh, wait. We did play Tony, Tony, Tony. My bad. This is different. This is cool and again. This is different. My bad. <laughs> what, kind of auntie, uh, what kind of auntie are you that you didn't uh, recognize this? But I did. But I just know we did celebration, but it's a different celebration. No, we celebration. did anniversary. anniversary. Oh, bitch. Anniversary celebration. Mandy's cut off. No more wine for Mandy. <laughs> bitch, and I started with fucking and Tito's. And you started with a Tito's. Uh, also, if you haven't yet, guys... Uh, we have a lot of bonus content over on Patreon. So yes. go on over to patreon.com backslash see the thing is pod. Uh, the link of that is in the description of this episode. Um, do you have anything else to say? What else? No, just thank you. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you for being so fucking great at your job. Thank you, Bridget. And for inspiring me to up my game every single week for Stop the last it. 54 weeks. Stop it. 55 weeks this now. This is episode 55, yeah, baby. Yeah, we made it through a year, man. I, I would not I would not have Hold wished. Hold on, what's I could 55 not... minus 19? All right. We made, okay, sorry. All right. All right. We're well, only, we're only, we're, we don't need to, we don't need to subtract anything. What's okay. meant to, what's meant to continue right. on continues on in abundance and we are going to continue on abundantly, Okay. Just with, like your baby hairs. I know that's okay, right. Okay, go. with on. God's favor and God's grace. All right, raise it <laughs> up, y'all. Thank y'all. Hope y'all enjoy y'all's work week. We love you. Again, we got a bonus episode dropping on Wednesday and every Wednesday. Yes. Uh, if you haven't yet, go ahead and join our Patreon. That's patreon.com backslash see the thing is We love you. We'll see you next week. Turn it up. Is that yeah. it? That's the a, that's a max. There we go. It's a celebration. Where's my wine? The way my bladder's sitting, bitch, I gotta piss. <laughs> Is that a sexy way to say it? My man said there's a sexier way to say that. To say piss? There's nothing sexy about the word If you piss. gotta piss, how you say it, Bridget? I say I gotta pee. Oh, pee is much better than piss? I'm not trying to make it sound sexy. <laughs> oh, well, bitch, I gotta piss. All right. Shout out to all the bladder infections. What? Okay, sorry. <laughs> We're not celebrating that. We're not. No. Okay. <laughs> UTIs. Let's no. go. <laughs> IUDs, though. We'll celebrate those. We're going to celebrate hey, the IUDs. Celebrate okay. the birth control. Yes. Celebrate the pullout method. Team No Babies. Hey. <laughs> Bye, guys. Later.